After a quick run around, the first thing we did was encounter Hobby Lodge here, taking on the Retro Beta RK Plus. Things really started to heat up on the bonus stage, as you can see here. We have uh, Retro Beta really concentrating, does not want to get felled by any of these balls. Here we go. He's really, really concentrating. Oh no, there we go. Fell and by a ball. Can the Hobby Lodge do any better? Now, Martin is a seasoned veteran of bouncing one's balls on the Amiga. He's very, very practiced in the art of ball bouncing, especially passing them back with a uh, little paddle there. He loves doing that. So, as we can see, he's much more um, accomplished at this than Retro Bade was, and he's doing very well. And it's, oh dear, and it's all over for Martin, too. Excellent. You do know that now you said that, God, that's going to get clipped out of this. No, no, well, yeah. Get some magic wood, then they've got trees everywhere. That magic wood. wood. Come, come, on, come on, you can't say that, and I can't yeah. not sneak it. Come on, yeah, you can't. Alex, we're all watching you, mate. We've all got magic wood. Come on, let's wood. <laughs> Oh, yeah. uh, you know you're going to get Retro Chef in the comments now, don't you? Oh. Oh, God. I'm getting a bit geeky, a bit nerdy, aren't I? But, yeah. Well, that's what this is about, though, isn't it? This, it's yeah. a nerdy stream. Oh, small balls. I was not expecting small balls. You know what I just noticed watching the intro just then was a couple of films that I've watched this week were in the intro. <laughs> so, <laughs> I haven't watched any enough. of them for a while. It's been a while since I've watched any of them. Well, one of them was Arena, and I was watching that only yesterday. So Yeah, I watched that a few weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> and you know the interesting thing about that as well? Did you see the, the bit at the beginning, Scott, where it warns you that the writing's off and that it was a mistake in the original yeah. release? Yeah. yeah, I never realised that. I mean, I had it back in the day on VHS, and I never picked up on that. No, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah, so basically all the writing is slightly off on the title and the credits at the beginning. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a mistake made when they first filmed it. So. Well, there you go. I didn't know that. <laughs> what film's that? Arena? Arena, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Have you, have you seen it? Watch that, Paul. I don't think I have. <laughs> um Probably going to say that a lot tonight. So, <laughs> well, it, it, to be honest, you, a lot of people probably haven't seen it because it was a bit of a B movie, wasn't it, Scott? Yeah, it's sort of straight to video, wasn't it? Yeah, it? yeah. It's, it's like a, it's meant to be like a, a a fight between aliens and humans, all different races, and they have a device called the handicapper, which levels them off because some species are stronger than others. All right, and yeah, and, and to be honest, with you the funny thing is when it came out back in the day, you know, it was like. Oh, it looks a bit cheap. Acting might not be so great. But actually, when you go back and look at it now and compare it to some of this new rubbish you get, it's like, actually, this looks miles better than some of the crap we're getting now. <laughs> so, Don't say that, mate, or you'll get a reboot and it'll destroy it. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, keep yeah. it under your hat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Years ago, they brought out... Oh, who was in it? Samuel Jackson and all that was in it. And that was called Arena. Yeah, but is it the same now? I don't think it it's is. It's not the it? same film because I was like, yeah. no, please don't remake this film. But it wasn't. Yeah. 
So it's a bit like Total Recall, where it's just nothing like the original. <laughs> yeah, it's got absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Let's not talk about that. Sorry, I, I'll try to keep my language down before nine o'clock, because I don't want to mention that film ever again. <laughs> oh, don't worry, don't worry. I don't want to swear. <laughs> um, so we've got you start doing that in the chat. And we've got Mark as well. And we've got my oldest boy as well. Hey, Kyle. Yeah, he, he was saying like, he, he doesn't get the notifications, but he's actually remembered or, you know, he's on this one. So uh, music is so good on this intro. Yeah, I, I, I found that um, on, on YouTube, funny enough. It was like no copyright one. For now. <laughs> yeah, for now, yeah. <laughs> and then, obviously, I don't know who this guy is, though, you know. And then we got the Hobby Lodge, Martin. How you doing, Hi. mate? How you Hi. doing? Now, we was meant to have other people on here, but um, Pedro's movie cavern, he's had something come up, so he, he couldn't make it. Um, have, do we know anything about um, Pedro from VHS Bootleggers? Uh, I've messaged him. Yeah. He's running late from work or something, possibly. Yeah, maybe he's just going to jump in when he's ready. Yeah. The fact that he hasn't messaged, I would have thought he would have messaged if there was an issue. So, yeah. But that's all right. We can get going. So um, this one, I gave it a generic title, Movie Talk, because I thought it'd be nice just to talk about what we've been watching recently, because normally we've done streams where it's been certain topics like, you know, Star Wars special, or we did uh, Best of 2020 Freedom, we not long back. But I wanted to do one just to talk about things we've just been watching in general. And uh, I'd seen a couple of films at the cinema, um, I know Scott's seen at least one on the cinema recently, and Paul, you've watched a fairly recent film, not not so uh, long back. Well, a that, couple, yeah, I went to the cinema a couple of weeks ago to see the same film as you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I've watched um, what, another one as well since then, and I think that's where I'm going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm sure we'll get onto that. Well, um, just to warn anyone, we are going to be talking about some films that are on the cinema and. In order to talk about it, we've got to kind of spoil them. So there will be spoilers. Um, so you are warned. Um, what should we talk about first? Should we talk about one that we've all seen? Yeah. That's um, what I'm thinking. So what have we all seen? Have we all seen Ghostbusters Frozen Empire? I haven't, but I'm pro yeah. I, I'm, I'm not fussed really. Like, I, I, I'm interested to find out about it. Um, I, I did look to see if I could find a, a bit of a bootleg, but uh, I wasn't able to. What about June 2? We've all seen that, right? Or June Part 2, should I think? Yeah, I've yep. seen that. Yeah, I'll tell you, let's, let's kick it off with that. We've all seen that, haven't we? Um, so, uh, oh, where do we start? I mean, the first part came out a while ago, but uh, I mean, it's a, it's a vast improvement, I think, on the... 80s one, not that that's too hard <laughs> to be honest. Um, I don't know what did you guys think because uh, one of the things I've, I've got from watching it, it looked nice and it was all right, you know, it wasn't a bad film. I think it could have been a little bit quicker getting to where it was going at times. It, it did take quite a while to get where it was going. And one of the things I kind of had a bit of a bug with was. The last battle I thought would be a bit longer, and it, it seemed to be done pretty quickly. Mm. But um, one of my problems with the guy who directed this, and it seems to be a common thing with all of his films that I've watched, is that, that for me anyway, there never seems to be much of a a watchability. Like I find that once I've watched them once, I, I don't feel the urge to watch them again. What Not, other films has he done, Lee, then? So we can have a uh, he did Sicario 1 and 2. I'll be honest, I watched the first one, didn't feel the need to watch the second one, so I didn't. And I've never gone back to the first one. Uh, Blade Runner 2049, I think I watched it at the cinema, maybe once on streaming. That's it, I've never gone back to it. Didn't See, I like really it. like that film. I've watched that film three or four times. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is with that film. I don't know. I, I, it didn't feel like Blade Runner to me, if that makes sense. But maybe that's just because Harrison Ford isn't in it much. I don't, I don't know. But I don't know. It, it's something about his films. They always look great, and they're not bad films. But 
I always just find that I never feel the urge to just watch him again. I think he's he's really good at cinematography. I think the cinematography oh, yeah. in the films is fantastic. Oh yeah, definitely. And you got to be positive about Dune too, because we're so negative about so many big films that come out in the cinema these days. It seems to be the trend to just hate everything that comes out. Yeah, but Dune yeah. too, I think, is actually a really well made film. I thought. Oh it was yeah, good. yeah. Yeah, uh, that, that's the it's problem. Really it, it sounds like I'm being negative about it, and I'm really not. It's a good yeah. film. It's just that uh, one of the bugs I have is that I can't, I don't just don't feel the need to watch them again. It, you know, if if it I makes get sense. that, I get that with Dune. I, I remember watching Dune two, thinking, "Shall I watch Dune one again?" Yeah, because it was a couple of years back, and I'm getting old, and I couldn't really remember it all. And I stuck it on, and I just turned off, wound out for it. So. Well, luckily for me, because I knew um, Dune two like was 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 coming out, and I hadn't seen Dune one, so I watched Dune one for the first time a couple of weeks ago, and then when it became available, I watched uh, Dune two, literally two weeks after. So it wasn't too bad. However, because they're on for such a long time, it's it, it's quite um, it, yeah, you, you've got to make a bit of a commitment, you know, because it's like two and a half hours. Oh yeah, forty five each, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So, but like, like you were saying, Lee, the first one, like, I, I think it was an hour before like anything really happened. Like, the, the, it took such a long time to set like the, like the scene. Um, and I must admit, I, I found it a little bit confusing. I wasn't really sure who was the good guys and who was the bad guys, and or maybe maybe they've done that done that on purpose. Um, but yeah, I, I was completely lost off probably for uh, about halfway through the film. I didn't know really what was going on. <laughs> so, uh, but I got there in the end. Yeah, yeah. It's um, one of the things I found interesting with these films is is his use of color. Have you noticed how he, he uses different colors to portray different races yeah. of people? You yeah. Notice that. Yeah. Like when you when you see the Harkonnen worlds, like obviously it's meant to have um is it a white sun? I think it is, isn't it? It's a white sun, so everything looks white and black, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I thought that was interesting because they wear black armor as well. So if you're in any doubt who the bad guy is, it's pretty much like painted for you right there, isn't it? In colour, yeah. you know. Um it's going back to old direction old sort of cinematography you know i remember the italians done that a lot yeah years ago with with the color grade and, and changing the colors for scenes like that I, I like it i like that sort of thing yeah yeah it's uh it's, it's very clever done i mean even the music as well like when, when you hear the music sort of change you can mm. even if you didn't know really what's going on by the music you can tell like the, the mood is set um the guy who plays, um, oh Christ, what's his name now? Is it, is it Fade? The lunatic guy? Elvis, yeah. he, he was played by Sting in the uh, 80s one. Um, I thought he was all right. He, he, you know, he looked apart. He, he does look like a nutcase. Um, the only issue I kind of had with him was he kind of did a bit of a Batman thing where he's putting a voice on. Because I've heard uh... him talk in other stuff and he doesn't sound like that. Yeah, and that, that kind of took me out of it a little bit, but other than that, he weren't too bad. I thought he was quite good. If you mind, to be a bit like the Joker out of um, um, our oh, Suicide Squad, or do you know, like I don't know, I, I seem to get that sort of feeling from him. This is the one that he fights at the end of June, too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the one yeah. he has the knife fight with at the end. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, <laughs> it was just like the way he went on, it just kind of reminded him, reminded me a little bit of that uh, character, yeah. Kind of. So I can see um, Pedro in the back bit. I'm just trying to work out if he's ready to come in or not. Give us a thumb up, mate. If you are, he is right. Good. Okay. Uh, I may just stick me uh, hoodie on because it's getting a bit, it's getting a bit chilly. Hello, mate. How you good? Paul? Not bad, you. Good evening. How you doing, Paul Scott? Lee. Yeah, right, oh, good, mate. Good to see you. Nice to see you, fellas. Yeah, it's been it's the first time I've been on a stream in eight months. So thanks oh, for the invite. Wow. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll, you'll, you'll regret it in a minute. <laughs> I, I've been wanting to get you on for a while, like, and it, it's funny because Paul hasn't been on one for a while either. So you, you're both in the same boat. I apologise in advance if I have any internet issues. I've just gone on the phone here because it's just a computer 
it uh, didn't like it for whatever reason. So I thought I'd, it's better to go on here. So okay, man, no worries. I probably need to know all that. Dead interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we was just talking about um, June part two. Have you watched that? No, but I have watched a bit of the first one, and I have recently bought the David Lynch Dune. Now, oh, okay, yeah. It requires a little bit of the the right attitude to, to put it on. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like one of those movies. Like, I love David Lynch, but June is the film that <laughs> you have to be in the right mood to do it. So I watched yeah. June again recently and enjoyed it. And I did watch the remake, and I kind of liked it. But I didn't like it enough to really want to watch the second part yet when, when I've got like a whole host of other things to watch. But to give it some kudos here, the, the settings and the CGI is top notch. Yeah, yeah. There's something a bit dry about it though. It, it's lost its set in the desert. That's a set in the desert. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of what, what, what concerned me a little bit about it was in, in David Lynch June, you have like a sort of a tongue in cheek sense of humor. You've got um, uh, Cooper, uh, what's his name? Fucking hell, um, Cooper from Twin Peaks. Oh, the main character. Um, Kyle. Oh, oh yes, I know you mean. Um Kyle McLaughlin. That's it. Yeah. And I just, I really like him. I think he's a really good actor. And I, I don't know. I just, I just I struggle with modern actors a lot of the time. Maybe it's just me, mm. but they just I feel, I feel like they're overly serious on in every frigging scene. Um, but yeah. but I think in all fairness to it, I do need to give it a proper chance because it it was there was certain things I, I did quite like about it. It wasn't shit at all. No, no. It, it, it's funny because we, we were just saying a minute ago, I mean, one of the things I've found with the guy who directed it is a lot of the films that he di I've watched that he's directed, I, I watch them and they look great and they're not bad films, but I never feel the need to go back and watch them again. You see, you this is the thing, isn't it? It's not like, he's not. it's almost like that these people have got such a clinical style now that it, it doesn't warrant going back. They don't have their own signature thing. Like yeah. even Tarantino has his own signature style. And, he, and he's a he's not an innovator at all. He's just a thief. But at least you can tell, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm watching a Tarantino movie. I'm watching a, a Dario Argento movie. I'm watching, like Scott said, the, the Italians. Um, Lucio Fulci without, I mean, all of these people, John Carpenter, um, yeah. Stanley Kubrick, all of these genius level directors. Who, who is there? Nolan? I mean, you could put this guy. Who's, this could be directed by Christopher Nolan, couldn't it? This yeah. June movie. It looks yeah. exactly the same. Fucking bland. Really good graphics, uh, but sort of like these slightly wooden performances that are really, like you can tell all these twats that are appear on it are from the theatre. You know, they've had theatre yeah. training, but not like in the same way as someone really cool like Christopher Lee had th theatre training. You know mm. what I mean? To yeah. just got this sort of obnoxious cuntiness to them, I mean, and that, and that's just me. I, just, I fucking hate them. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't like it, then? Is everything Pedro's saying? I'm agreeing with because yeah. that is the state of affair with modern cinema. Is mm. you've got no mm. creativity, you've got no stamp left anywhere. You can put a film on and you know if it's Steven Spielberg, you know if it's John Carpenter, you know if it's an Italian director. But he's dead right in what you're saying, is that there is a sterileness. Sterile. Films See, now. One, one thing I can say that I do agree with when it comes to June is that for once, they did a reboot on a film that wasn't that great the first time around. Mm. Whereas normally what they have a bad habit of doing is getting a film that's really good yeah, and, in, and expecting the reboot to do as well. And it's like, yeah. of course, it's not. It's, it's never yeah. going to do as well. Like, <laughs> uh, at least with I think that, that's a fair quite... assessment, Lee. But, I, but sorry to interject here, but yeah, I, 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 David Lynch, man. <laughs> well, yeah, I just can't diss anything he's done. I mean, I know June's perhaps his weakest movie, but to me, it's still a, a masterpiece in terms of like 
imagine this is 1984. Was it 83 or 84? And it's it suddenly the practical yeah. effects are stunning, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah. Good. Graphics look good now. I, I like them anyway. Yeah, no, you're all right. Trouble with that film as well. It's it's actually a miracle that that film got made. I think it had so much trouble. Well, it's got mm. some great actors in it. I mean, you got a very young Patrick Stewart in the original. Yeah, Patrick yeah. Stewart. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, he was That's... staged like he did stage then. So, yeah. He did. Uh, yeah. The, the only problem I found mm. with that film, and I think one of the things that was what ruined that film was the monologues. I think that's what done it with that. Because I don't like the version of Blade Runner where you've got that, you know, with the internal monologues going on. I find that annoying in that as well. Oh, so, the director's cut. Yeah. It's the first one I ever saw, so I've got a bit of a, I don't know, a, a relationship with it because it was the, the, the Blade Runner I remembered. But, yeah. Does, does it? I hear what you're saying. It, it does <coughs> you out with it a little bit. Yeah, yeah internal of, monologues. Yeah, that's what it is, isn't it? But you are right, though. I mean, when you actually go back and look at it, although it's an old film, it does look great. Like that bit where you got the Baron like floating around in the original, and, in, and even the knife fight at the end as well. I mean, that looks really good in the original. Well, they're not with Sting, isn't it? Yeah. 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 And it's actually quite kind of cool in that movie. The two movies he's any good in, Quadrophenia and, and yeah, Jim. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and the funny thing was, me and Paul was having a chat about this the other day, is that you notice, I noticed it, especially in the new one, you can see other films that are stolen bits from June as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. we was talking about Chronicles of Riddick, when you've got the Necromongers and the uh, that whole thing at the end where Riddick has a fight with the... I forget what his name is, but he beats him and wins the, the throne off him, don't he? That's all the same as the knife fight at the end of June, and the look of them looks almost similar, like the armour look and mm. everything about them is very similar. You can see that they've lifted that straight from June. You see, they're trying to... In the 80s and the 90s, especially the 90s, actually, I guess there was... David Lynch had come into his own, hadn't he? And he'd become so sort of popular in film circles that he was then being uh people were being influenced by him directors weren't they yeah but again yeah. his entire vibe is completely unique there's other surrealist filmmakers out at the time but david lynch is uh, like we were saying about italian cinema scott you could tell the difference between an umberto lenzi car chase next to a lucio fulci one yeah you no know? Or there's there's a there's a uniqueness to it. There's things, there's sort of motifs that each director uses that the other doesn't. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. there's a massive difference between Mario Bava again and and uh, I'll go back to Fulci. Not there, and, and all of them, every single one of them. And these are tra These are, a lot of these movies are considered a low grade. Yeah, yeah. Well, funny enough, we we was talking about um, Arena before we started. Oh. And you know, a low low grade film. It was a B movie, wasn't it? You know, humans boxing aliens, but it's a good film. It's but, a um, fantastic movie. It's so enjoyable, so entertaining. And what they have right, you see, is just a, a care and attention. Like, look, this is our budget. This is what we're dealing with. This is what we're working with. Let's put on a show, and you know, not sort of, perhaps not take it overly seriously. This is the problem. This is the issue with June I have. He's this sort of boy, like, <coughs> this overly <coughs> serious tone constantly. There's no light. There's no shade. There's no light and dark. Mm. It's just fucking moody. Yeah. Like Batman. I'm sorry. It's just fucking moody, man. Come on. Mm. Lighten the frigging tone. Like yeah. Tim Burton lightened the tone. He's, there's a unique guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Tim Burton makes fantastic films. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, the thing is, with modern films, you find this more and more, don't you? Like, it, it's it's like, they, like for example, one of the traits you see them do all the time is let's just chuck a load of CGI in it and that'll do. <laughs> you know, the thing is, they always lack a story and any type of direction. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's a common thread with a lot of new movies, isn't it? I mean, well, it's almost yeah. as if directors are afraid to, to do depth, as in. Have a bit of comedy. Well, they play have, it safe, don't they? Horror. Have 
a little bit of realism, have it all in there, but mix it. And, and it's all about timing, isn't it? Timing mm-hmm. those moments spot on. And I think 80s films in general were great at that. Yeah. You know, you could have one scene that actually was, look, take, I don't know, Wes Craven, A Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm. You've got scenes in that film that stick in my mind from watching that back then that terrified me. But there's yeah, also yeah. scenes that made me laugh. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. there's also scenes in there where there's a metaphor and it's all about kids growing up and there's some realism there. And then the real horror is that he was a bloody paedophile and, and a nasty person before that they killed him. And mm. all of that mixed together made a great film. And, and now I think, well, these directors now are a bit sterile as they don't do that depth. They don't add like Doom. It was a it, Doom 2 was a great film. I, I thought the cinematography was great, the CGI, the acting, the script, everything's great, but there's no depth. There's not one moment where I laugh. There's not really a moment in the film where I thought, oh, that's you know, close to the bone. That, you know, it's just one level where they played it safe throughout the whole film. There, there's one character I did kind of have a bit of an issue with in June <laughs> 2, and and I don't know why they, they seem to keep shoving her in everything at the moment. And She's all right, but I don't think she's like the best actor I've ever seen. She was also in uh, the, the Spider-Man movie. She played Mary Jane. Um, oh, I, can't, yeah. I can't think of her name, but um, I don't know. Like, I, It's almost like, I, I don't know if she's been told to act the part like this, but she just seems moody in everything she's in. Like, you know. Now, I know in June 2, it gets to a point where she has a reason, obviously, to be moody because... She can see what's happening, like between her and um, uh, Paul, but it's like she seems to be like it all of the time. No matter what, she seems to play almost the same sort of role in everything. Like in the Spider-Man films, she's quite moody and sarcastic to him all the time. In this one, she just seems to be having a pop at him all the time, you know. And I don't know. I just I. I don't know why they keep bugging her and everything. I... Don't you think that the new generation of actors, though, they act one role. That's it. That's their that's their trophy. That's what they do. Well, well, we'll get into that the when we get the Ghostbusters. The actors back, you know, back in the day, they could play many different roles and many. And I think that's why we've got so much respect for some of these old actors is because they have played so many varied roles. They got a range. Yeah, yeah they've got a range. A lot of these yeah. young actors, like the guy that the main lead in Doom 2. Yeah. His name, but he played Wonka, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Uh... Yeah, he, he's another one that seems to be getting bunged in everything. And again, yeah. he, he's not very memorable, I don't think. Just one he... level. They're just one yeah. level. I mean, I'll be honest. Like, I'd probably see him in another film. I might recognise his face, but I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing really that makes him stand out, I don't think, in that film, if yeah. I'm honest. I think if you look at casting directors now, that they they go for people with a certain aesthetic appearance, mm. but they also go for these stagey type people who've had a lot of experiences, you know, uh, treading the boards and being involved in in productions th- throughout history, you know, like throughout their whole life. They've probably got some sort of bloodline link to Hollywood a lot of the time, a cousin, auntie, uncle, so on and so forth. And they get sort of shoved into these roles and they're prepared for it. But they, they're lacking any in any dy- dynamic sort of attitude of their own. Like, where is I've been watching a lot of John Wayne, right? Where is a John Wayne type character who pretty much plays a version of himself in every film? However, he's got charisma galore. He's yeah. got galore. Yeah. Yeah. Where is this guy? You had it in the 80s. Patrick Swayze. Charisma yeah. galore. This yeah. is what Roadhouse was missing, which is sort yeah. of all right. But I don't know if we're going to get into that. But um, you ain't got Patrick Swayze, mate. Sorry, yeah. uh, what's his name? He's a good actor. He's got a bit of charisma, but he's oh, not. Um, oh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal. That's yeah. him. That's him. Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. He's good. He's good. He's a good actor, but he's not. And these other ones that are coming. I mean, bearing in mind he's in his forties now. These people coming after a Jake Gyllenhaal. I'm even I, bloody more. I loved him in the. Um, 
in Donnie Darko. I thought that was class. <laughs> such that I just that it was such a bizarre film. I thought it was, it great. was a bizarre film, but you know, I'm gonna have some shit on that as well. If I, look <laughs> back, if I look at all the cool surreal movies, Donnie Darko doesn't shine a bloody light on anything Lynch has ever made. Uh, you know, it's just nowhere near because it's just kind of got this wanky pretentiousness to it. Whereas Lynch, you could really look into it. I guess you could write an essay on Donnie Darko, but really the whole thing is kind of meaningless to me. I haven't uh, sort of looked into it in that much detail, but I haven't seen anybody t t sort of break it down and go, well, actually, this movie represents this. You know, is he yeah. having a schizophrenic kind of breakdown, whatever, but, and then he's got this character in his mind. I think, Look, it's I will look. It's okay though. It's all right. It's still much better and more creative than what we have now. But he's still yeah. a load of shit in comparison <laughs> to the easy David. <laughs> uh, well, it seems as we we got onto the subject of um of uh what you call Roadhouse. I've not watched it. I'll tell you why because I watched the trailer and I thought it looked like a pile of garbage. So I never <laughs> even bothered. Right. <laughs> It, it just looks to me like a generic <laughs> film with bad acting and someone just decided, what can we slap on this that people know? Oh, I know. Let's slap Roadhouse on it and people will watch it. And so I didn't bother, but I know obviously some of you did. Uh, that and the fact that he's got uh, Conor McGregor in it, and I'll be honest, I've always thought he's a bit of a dickhead anyway. I can't stand him. <laughs> yeah, so I, did, I had no wish to sit there and watch a two-hour film with him in it. No way. <laughs> so, is he in it much? Has anyone seen yeah. it? He's Have you it? seen it, Scott? Yes. Yeah, I watched it. I liked I, the original, so I'd never like what came next. <laughs> so, apart from the name of the character, it didn't really yeah. have much to do with the original Roadhouse. To be fair, I actually <laughs> like that McGregor guy because the director played on him being someone that no one likes. Do you know what I mean? And it kind of worked for the film. He was fucking nuts in it. Well, most um, people don't like him, so it kind of works and anyway. I think if, he was, if he wasn't in it, if he weren't one of the... See, I like a film where you've got that stereotypical over-the-top villains. Yeah. I love that. And I think that's something that's really lacking in cinema now. What we're talking about, the realism and these... You've got to believe these real bad people that have emotional when they were abused as children so that's why yeah. they're now this evil person now no bring back those stereotyped villains over the top james bond-esque villains yeah and i really like that about roadhouse because mm. i thought his character was absolutely brilliant a bit refreshing in in a way i totally agree with you scott i mean he was the selling point for me um you know, I kind of like Conor McGregor in a terms of, look, here's a guy that plays by his own rules. He, he, he cannot be controlled by the establishment, especially if you think about what he's been saying about Ireland. In, in I know this is going on a different topic. No fucking actors ever do that. You know, normally, no, that's true. People that in the mainstream true. are going, no, Conor McGregor is, is saying what he believes. And I would kind of have to respect that mm. because he's got balls. And then he plays this role and he's playing him like a, a really obnoxious version of himself. Yeah, yeah. But he can fight the fight, the the fight scenes, other than the, the some of the, the CGI's were preposterous in places. <laughs> However, some other scraps are really good. It's like yeah. you put your brain, you take your brain out of your head, grab the popcorn, fucking switch it on. There's nothing, you know, oh, there's nothing politically correct in there to annoy you or overt feminism or anything like this. It's just a stupid, dumb frigging movie that was kind of fun. And I thought that was all right. You know, it, it sounds watchable, actually. Watchable. <laughs> you, you really are sounding to me. <laughs> like, so. it's, just cool. it's just a cool little movie. It's kind of stupid and dumb and all that. But it's kind of like, yeah, all right. It's that. If, if they had oh, named it, hour and a half, isn't it? An hour and a half, or where, however long it is, and you enjoy the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Paced about it. If they had named it anything other than Roadhouse, I would have watched it. Yeah, I agree if, with because that. Because they called it Roadhouse, I was like, I don't want to watch this. Like, I, I, I agree with you. 
it was a missed opportunity, really. But, but I mean, again, going back to Jake Gillenall, to be fair to him, and I, I, maybe I was a bit harsh on him. I think out of those sort of contemporary actors, I mean, he's, as he, he even got a couple of years on me. I think he he, he can do quite. I mean, he's got a range, hasn't he? Yeah. He plays um, a homosexual bloody uh, cowboy in, in Michael Houlihan. If you're watching his favourite movie, Brokeback Mountain. Um, <laughs> And he also plays it. I mean, he's 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 caught, isn't he? Scott. Yeah, he played a cage fighter, didn't he? In one of the films. Oh my god! You've got yeah. to give it to him. He well, is it? absolutely ripped in Roadhouse. Ripped. Not an ounce of fat on him, man. He's he absolutely ripped. He, yeah, he's got in that shape before because he was in um, I forget what film it was. Now, but... Warner, that's it. Yeah, South Pole. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was it. He played a cage fighter. Tony Bellew whatever, was in that, wasn't he? Mm. Tony Bellew was in it, and he was in yeah. Rocky fucking... No, Creed, oh, but, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, Creed, Creed. It was Creed, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. He, he was yeah, quite no, good I, at I that, thought, actually. I thought Roadhouse... It could have been called Anything House. I don't yeah, know why yeah. they called it that. Um, Smackhouse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, the thing you know is, what? I mean, it's not even, like, similar, is it? It's not in, like, out in the middle of the sticks. It's, it's on the beach and all that, isn't it, if I, if I may? Yeah, yeah, right. quite right. You what know, was refreshing it. about it was just to see some alpha male just, yeah. just, just kick the shit out of them to solve the problem sort of attitude. In that yeah. form. I, I, I found it refreshing because there's been none of that for so long. Yeah, that's, that's true. It's a refreshing film. It's a masculine it's film. Like yeah. An average Scott Adkins movie with a much yeah. bigger budget. Yeah. Like any yeah. Scott Adkins movie is this movie, effectively, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but but with with more of a budget and a little bit more sort of, it's got a stoosh, sort of like a Hollywood over the topness to it, you know, like fucking speed boats and shit. Yeah, it's cool, yeah but that's what we want. That's what we yeah, want. Honestly, you will enjoy it. Forget <laughs> it's got anything to do with Roadhouse. Just put it on a, on its own yeah. entity, and you'll enjoy it. Because I did. I thought it was a right laugh. Yeah, I, I, might, I might have to have a look then. I might have to have a look because because yeah, yeah. if it's something that's like masculine and unapologetic about it, then yeah, oh, I might well, find it interesting. Yeah, nothing in remote in my, in the line. I really look into all this. Does you have to be even more deeply cynical than me to pull anything out of that? Yeah. That's just not possible. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Um, I, I, this film I definitely want to talk about. I don't know if any of you guys have watched this, but uh, I know Scott has, and that's the new Ghostbusters. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> oh, where do I start? Well, I went with my youngest, Connor, to watch this, and we was less than halfway through it. And we're already checking our phones <laughs> and looking at the time. That's a bad sign to me if you're doing that in the cinema. Ooh. And I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, how is it possible that we're nearly halfway and fuck all has happened? Like, there's it, just, there, there was no busting of ghosts. There's just nothing. Like, honestly, the only thing you had was a, a very quick chase at the beginning. And it's just lots of people talking about their feelings, you know, like you get in new films. Yeah. Um, and then you start getting these people in who are mediocre actors. Oh, mate, the, the humour. It's not even close to the original Ghostbusters. It, it really isn't. It, honestly, it just it doesn't land, any of it. And Connor even leant over to me and he went, Dad, these jokes just don't stop coming, do they? Like, he was complaining about it. He's like, this ain't funny, right. like, you know? But it just seems like it took an hour and a half of neandering to get to the point and when it did get to the point it just seemed like it wasn't worth it i don't know is that just my view scott what did you think i agreed 100 on the pacing of the film the film was overly long the whole thing about a ghostbusters film is you want to see him bust ghosts yeah <laughs> yeah they seem to have forgotten the basics yes the basics are you, you know, you take the original Ghostbusters film. Again, it's got realism. It's gritty. It's got comedy. It's got everything in it. And again, they just failed to deliver on any of that in the new one. Do you know yeah. what I really enjoyed Afterlife? I thought that was a cracking film. Yeah, it weren't bad, yeah. It was all right. So I had high hopes. I thought they were going to take it to the next level. 
and unfortunately they took steps back. It, it's nowhere near as good as Afterlife, and no, the it best could have been good. It, because my daughters enjoyed it when I went and see it with them. They enjoyed the film, and the best mm -hmm. I can give it is average. You know, five out of ten. That's what that would get, and that would be solely on. I kind of like the the villain ghost. You know, the big bad ghost. I kind of liked that ghost. I thought he was kind of quite scary looking for a modern. Uh, triple A film, and I thought too much CGI. Though I think it would have looked yeah, better. Yeah, they over the CGI in places. That bad guy would have looked better if he was practical and not CGI. It just didn't look real. I like the fact that the original Ghostbusters were in it more. I like that. And um, what else positive can I say? I liked the Ecto One was in it quite a bit. The little bits I like. There were scenes and snippets that I thought, yeah, that's cool. I like that. I like that Slime is in it. But the guy, I don't know his name, the young actor that was in Stranger Things. Oh, mate, honestly, he got on my nerves. <laughs> yeah, but they... <laughs> Wines. Wines role, all the time. His role was crap in it. Yeah. It's like lazy writing. The, the one thing you can say, Ghostbusters, the original Ghostbusters is in my top ten of films of all time. Yeah, because it hits so many things right. Yeah, and the one thing that you that you relate to in the original Ghostbusters is the characters. You buy into it. Well, the, well, the thing is, this new film you don't buy into any of them. The, the thing is with the original Ghostbusters is it took itself seriously. It did. It, yeah. it, it treated it as a serious film with the occasional joke. Whereas with this yeah. film, it doesn't do that at all, and it's just joke, 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 and it's like it's not fucking funny. Stop doing, like, you know, really the dude, I don't know his real name, but the guy that plays Ant Paul Rudd, he just plays Paul Rudd in everything, doesn't in he? Every single film. every film he's in, he's yeah. Paul Rudd. I was okay. waiting for him to put his fucking Ant Man suit on at one point. Yeah, yeah. Just like yeah. Ant Man. Yeah. Oh, honestly, like I, I, I couldn't stand it. it you know, it, and the funny thing is, Mark, my, my oldest, he's just said in the chat. And you were saying you would rather watch Ghostbusters over Godzilla X Kong, which I also watched, and believe me, we'll get to that. But <laughs> but I would actually say at this point that Godzilla X Kong was actually better, believe it or not. <laughs> so um at, at least like with that, I I didn't feel like I'd been robbed of two hours of my life. Like <laughs> like I, I did with feel no, this might just be me being old, but I sometimes feel that I am old. And like I can't relate to some of the topics, maybe that they're yeah. talking about and relating to in the new Ghostbusters film. Because like yeah, but... I said, my daughters actually enjoyed it, but whereas me, I, I didn't relate to some of the stories in there. There's two what things with that, about. though. I'm an there's old two... Generation X, and I, you know, I don't get yeah. it. There's there's two things with that, though, right? One of the reasons why your daughters your daughters would enjoy that is because basically. All films are like this now, and it's all they know. A lot of them don't go back and watch the older stuff, so they don't know any different, right? My boys do because they've watched the older stuff, so when they watch this new stuff, they're like, Dad, this is crap. Like, you know, they get it. But the yeah. other thing is, is all the messaging, right? Now, Ghostbusters isn't massively heavier, heavy with the messaging in this film, but there's one part where colonialism gets mentioned, and I, I literally made an audio sigh and then rolled my eyes in the cinema and my youngest was like what's that about that and i was like i'll tell you later you know and the other thing was obviously that there seemed to be a huge although it's never actually addressed there seemed to be a huge thing about the girl phoebe and, <laughs> and the female ghost and being gay yeah 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 you know it's implied isn't it it's not said but it's implied and it's like yeah i see what you're doing i see what you're doing here you know this is the thing when we watched films, it was the story, and then this sort of stuff might have come into it later. But I just got the impression, like you do with a lot of new films, that it's all about the message, and then the oh, story gee. comes afterwards. And as a result, it suffers. I mean, even the original Ghostbusters in it were crap, I thought. Like Bill Murray, he, he sounds like he's reading the lines in most of the scenes he's in, and he's only I'm got gonna, a couple. I've got to say, you know, when, when I saw the advert. Um, the trailer and it had Bill Murray and the joke was he, he was 
talking to Paul Rudd, and the best they could come up with that's inoffensive but still sort of hip and trendy is to uh, ask Bill Murray, well, what did you do? Well, we uh, I went to the, went for a shower after we busted some goats, ghosts, goats, and then um, we go out to a, a nightclub. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, fucking That's the level of fucking humour. Are you yeah. serious? The first movie is is sort of rich with humour and it's multi layered and it's dry as hell. It's yeah. and, and, and he plays on Bill Murray's natural ability. All of yeah. them, to be fair. Yeah. I, I, Ivan Reitman, um, bloody uh, even Ernie Hudson. Okay, and and this just I thought this looks. I, what I did like about it, I haven't seen it. So I'll reserve some judgment and I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just give you my opinion quickly. I did really like the look, I must admit, of the frozen sort of yeah. um, scenery. Yeah. Yeah. That was cool. And so, and it, so, so that I like the idea of that. Mm. Um, but I just, I kind of bear Paul Rudd. Do you remember years ago, I don't know, should we say 15, 20 years ago, and Seth Rogen was like, actually made a couple of funny movies like um, Super Bad, and he was involved oh, yeah. with, what was it, um, the 40 year old virgin? And all, virgin. And yeah. A couple of these movies, you thought Seth Rogen, before he was like, obviously a complete arsehole, he yeah. was sort of kind of. Kind of. Let's be fair. He was involved in some good things, and Paul Rudd was he was involved in all that as well. That's right. You yeah. know, there was Paul Rudd, and again, he plays the same old shit in every movie. Just this sort of like modern man, but a bit older, and just he's got <coughs> pop, pop culture shit all the time. I don't fucking like him, and the reason I, the day I decided I don't like him was the day I decided to watch Ant Man, which was years ago now. I put it on. <laughs> I had to turn it off at this scene where his mate, the black guy, is uh, saying something offensive that Ant-Man doesn't approve of. He says, hmm, who? that's a bit much. And I thought, nah, yeah. turn it off now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not being bloody no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was liking the brother, what he was saying. Yeah, yes, brother, yeah. you're right. Right, you're yeah. giving a bit of humor. And Ant-Man's like, oh, no, because he's clutching his fucking pearls. Yeah. Miserable bastard. No. So anyway, I'd imagine this 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 Ghostbusters. What I did, I thought, no, we're not going to watch it. I didn't watch the other one either because I cannot fucking abide <laughs> those, those hideous kids with stupid fucking hair from that yeah. god awful series. Right? Yeah. I can't, he, he looks like not a wrong. He looks like a wet. He, his head deserves to go down a fucking bog. Right? Do, do you know what I thought watching him in that Brush. film? The whole time I was watching it and I leant over to Connor I went, Someone needs to buy that boy a fucking cheeseburger. Like, <laughs> he's so skinny, isn't he? Skinny, weedy. Yeah. A, a, a effeminate. I nearly said something there. I won't say that. <laughs> but I just thought, give it a frigging rest, mate. You'd have got just, yeah. you know, what the fuck is wrong with you? You know, anyway. And that's cool now. It's cool to be weak. It's cool to be fucking effeminate. It's funny you it's funny you mentioned the kids because they, they obviously want you in this film to feel sorry for Phoebe, right? But right. What, I, what I found funny is they make sure that in the first five minutes you hate her as a character. Of course and, then they, and then they start trying to tell you to feel sorry for her. But it's like, it's too late. I've already seen she's a dick. I don't feel sorry for her. <laughs> like, you, you broke that already. <laughs> it's very interesting what Scott says, though, and I think perhaps there is an element of that. You know, being older as well, you know, gen, like late Gen X, very late Gen X in my case, right? I can't relate to young kids. The only ones I see now, and uh, when 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 I, when I was working in my job, um, which I avoid like the plague now, but on the rare occasion I have to do something like that, uh, you, you're interacting with the youth, and they don't have anything of their own. There's no music scene of their own. They're they're into there's very little. Yeah. You know, you know, like when we were at school, you there, there was kids who you the drum and bass sort of raver people, the goths and the fucking metalers, and then the kind of I don't know all these skaters and all these these different groups. All you have now is this, this hodgepodge of like the same. Yeah. Um, and, and, and what they're into is is a lot of retro shit. You know, like uh, the, all the music they seem to like is either Taylor Swift. Or some other generic shit like that, or <laughs> old like Nirvana. They yeah, Nirvana. Nirvana. I was going to say Nirvana. <laughs> yeah, Nirvana. Come on, I mean, so they've got nothing of their own. They don't invent nothing. They've got this irreverent kind of Gen X, Gen Z humor, which I do not understand. 
So maybe I'm just. I'm sure you did a video about this. Didn't you do a video about this? Probably. I'm, I'm sure know. you did a shoot or something like that where you just properly and right in. I'm sure you well, did. Well, the thing is, it's not wrong. I mean, like one of the things that bugs me the most is like, for example, they'll do like a new Star Trek or or a new Star Wars, and someone like me who's been a fan since the day dot will complain that they don't like it, and then you'll get one of these new kids come in, start telling you that you're wrong, that your opinion's wrong, and that you should agree with him. And it's like, hang on a minute, you only came along five minutes ago. I bet you fuck off. Like, yeah. you know, you're you're not actually part of this conversation. You joined this group. You wasn't there at the start of it, you know, and that's one of the things that kind of bugs me, like you're saying, that a lot of them jump onto stuff that we all had, but then they start telling you how you should feel about it, and that really irritates me. Yeah. It, it, it really does me, uh, Lee. And I've, I've got to say, that there is a distinction. I'm Because I go to, like, a karate and a judo class, right? And the kids who go there are, are almost like we were a bit, except yeah. that there is a slight difference here. And I've noticed this. I thought, fucking hell, you've been led down a garden path you have. So I thought, fuck me, there's some kids here who are normal, you know, not talking normal sort of thing. I was a bit yeah. blown away, you know. And then uh, one of them said um, something that I thought, oh, dear, you've just let yourself down there. He said, <laughs> well, you see, the thing is, I've got autism. He didn't have fucking autism. <laughs> There's absolutely no way. But he was told, some twat, you know, some has told him he's got autism. And he yeah. believed it, you know, like, oh, they've got some other bloody ADHD or some fucking problem, some mental health issue because they've been... And I'm thinking, look, it's just cool now not to be normal. Yeah. If you had autism back in the day, if you've studied autism, you know how, how detrimental it can be uh, to affect a, a human being, you know, and it and needs to be treated properly. And, and, and just to sort of label everyone with that brush, it's to, to sort of... Um, I don't know. It's to it's to not be serious about it, quite frankly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that, that bothers me a lot. Well, it, that, a lot of that comes from like a victim culture, doesn't it? Like you know, victim. these days everybody loves being Never a victim, don't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, they they love being a victim. Like, oh, you're oppressing me, or you've done this, and half of them don't have a clue what they're talking about. Like, I mean, the amount of people you see going on, like for example, the colonialism comment in the film. The reason I rolled my eyes when I heard that, I thought, like, why is it he's only ever brought up that part of it? What about when the Roman Empire took shit from people and didn't give it back? What What about when Hitler and his... The Ottoman Empire. <laughs> you know, they, they've all when done the it. Thing about the Ottomans, eh? The thing is, the reason is, it's because it's anti-white. If it yes. comes out of fucking Hollywood, there's an anti-white, blatant agenda there. It's not just anti-white, to be fair. There's an, there's an anti-China rhetoric as well. There's an yeah. anti-Russia rhetoric. For quite some time, there was an anti, and I've got my own views on this, there was an anti-Islam, and I could go into a lot of detail about this, during the 9-11 the and stuff, there was a heavy anti-Islam rhetoric, right? Yeah. So th th these people want to push a particular agenda. Yeah. Don't, you think there's a, don't you think there's a type of film that that's suited to? Do you really want to see that kind of stuff being pushed in a family? No, no you don't want to see it in any movie. I was going to say, it shouldn't be in film. any film. Yeah. yeah. You well, see it in a war film from, 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 the perspective, from the perspective of the Allies, let's say. Of course, there's going to be a, a, a sort of a propagandised uh, yeah. version of events, isn't there? You know, the victor of the, the, the war rights, the history kind of thing. Yeah. So you, you can take it on board and go, look, look, I, I don't care if it's uh, propagandised. It's fine because... It, it's sort of telling their version of events, isn't it? But no, not in a mainstream story. Why is this stuff in anything? Because yeah. it's trying to tell the kids. It's trying to teach them a message of yeah. fucking progressivism. And I said I wasn't going to talk about this, but um, <laughs> I am. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be honest with you, I mean, it, it, it needs to be talked about because this is the glaring issue with these new films, you know, that everything's got to come after the message, you know, like the, including the story. And as a result, then you just get these piles of nonsense films that you aren't worth your money. And when you, after you've watched them, you hate yourself because of it. Right. Like, you know, <laughs> I mean, one of the things that um, we're going to talk about at some point is the Godzilla movies, because I know Paul watched one of them recently. I had to watch four of them in a weekend. And quite frankly, <laughs> 
um, could have quite easily purposely injured myself afterwards because of it. <laughs> you know, so, um, but the difference with them films is, is them films are what they are, which is a dumb monster movie, you know, and to a certain degree, they're actually more fun because they don't have a lot of that messaging crap chucked in there, you know, they're just senseless. So, yeah, it's, it's I don't know, it's just hard. I find I'm watching old films all the time. I go back to films I enjoyed, you know. I, I suppose the only reason I really watch new films now is with the hope that one of them every now and again will be good. And occasionally you do get that. I mean, the, the last one I put on that I really enjoyed around COVID time, which was a new film at the time, was Brightburn. I thought that was a great film. You know? That was a great little movie. You recommended it to me, Lee. Yeah, I think it's we good. did stream on it, didn't we? Anyway, it was um it was re it was fun. It was yeah. cool. Yeah. Didn't take itself too seriously, and it just went, What if Superman was bad? Done. <laughs> and that was it, wasn't it? You know? So yeah. I, I've I don't heard know. Really good things. It's much more as just putting comments about the new omen film. Do you know what? I've heard really yeah. good things about that. Yeah, interesting. Mm. Really good. I've thing. heard I've heard some messed up stuff about it. There's some really messed up things going on in there. Like what? You see, um, Lee, we could get into that. You know, you know when we talk about sort of the messed up things now, because I, I, I sit somewhere on the fence with all this, thinking about it. Because you know, like on the, the dissenting sides of people who discuss films, and uh, they they often talk about messaging. You know, yeah. not talking necessarily about political stuff here, but like satanic messaging. Now, I'll be honest with you, I've I'm quite into my satanic fucking movies, right? Especially when it comes to like Hammer Horror and that. So, yeah. a lot of what they're saying, uh, it, it sort of goes to a certain level. It goes really far, and they'll talk about how you know the hammer was was part of like pushing. Um, satanic messaging and all this kind of stuff. And it, 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 do you remember all that satanic panic with the heavy metal in the eighties? Yeah, you know, yeah. Playing records backwards and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Of, and, and perhaps some of it, some of the imagery is kind of satanic, but I don't know. I, I don't think it's necessarily all bad either. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like I've turned out all right. I know what's right and wrong, etc. Uh, but I do like my satanic kind of shit. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. I, I mean, I think this Omen film is a prequel. I think, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Yeah. And I, oh, I, I heard, wait, I heard man, something... love it. The, the, something... The, this is my next film to watch. It's You're great. Talking about satanic. Yeah, I've got that to watch, and I picked up that one. Oh, Kill uh, Moon Harvest. Killer's Moon. Killer's ah. Moon. I haven't got that one. That's on a two for 15, isn't it, Scott? It is. That's why I grabbed them. <laughs> it, Brit, that one's British. I, I will get my hands on that this week, probably. Is that Powerhouse, is that? That's 88 Films. Oh, 88 um, Films, right. Yeah. Powerhouse had a sale as well. And, yeah, um, I've yeah. got a few coming, yeah. Have yeah. you got a few coming? Yeah, they've got some... Um, We've got some great Jack Nicholson, early Jack Nicholson movies on there. Oh, have they? I've yeah, really, them. really cool ones, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, um, it's funny, actually, because I was going to get Christine off of um, Amazon, and it was nine ninety nine, and then I heard off of uh, another channel I watch, uh, Pedro's Movie Cabin, he said, oh, they got a salon on, on V, three for 15. I was like... Oh, yeah. So I went over there and I got back down a couple of others. And, you know, I'm glad the I didn't get it. Off that the sale is they done that same sale at Christmas, didn't they, Pedro? Yeah. And me, me and Pedro, we bought fucking shit loads. So I pretty much bought everything they had. Yeah. yeah when I, the around, there weren't nothing to get. Yeah. I've got to say, there's a, there's, there's a couple of new releases I want, though. There's, um, it's called, uh, it's a Christopher Lee movie, and he pr plays the Prime Minister of, the first Prime Minister of Pakistan. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's supposed to be his best ever role, and, and uh, it's Jana, Jina. I'm desperate to see that, because they, they'll do a wicked scan of it. Because uh, I, I tell you what's brilliant, you know, you've got to watch, um, I've, been, I've got all the Fu Manchus. Yeah. They are superb, man. Watch Fu Manchu. Yeah. Well, Chris, Sorry, I'm just answering someone in the chat. The best. Mm. 
But have you ever seen this, Pedro? Have you ever seen oh. the torture chamber of Dr. Sadie? Um, I have indeed. I've got it in there. See, I've, um, not, I've never seen this film, I don't think. It's very, very hammer horror. Yeah. Um, Isn't it German? You'll like it. Is this a German production? I think it's a, it might be a co-production, yeah. I think yeah. it's set in Carlsberg, if I remember rightly. So I think it might be a co-Italian German. To be honest with you, Scott, I've watched so many of them recently that a lot of ones bled into the other. <laughs> so, so I can't quite remember. Because, you know, if you watch about 20 of them back to back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, which one's what? <laughs> What do we think of They Live? They Live is a fantastic film. I haven't watched that for so long. Wasn't that was with, awesome. uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper? Yeah. Wasn't it? yeah. With, yeah. His, uh, with the glasses. Yeah. yeah. Masterpiece. Oh, yeah. I've uh, not watched it for years. Everything about that movie is, is, you, is playing out in real time now. Yeah. Yeah. I get the bit about marriage. Because they don't want you to get married and they don't want you to procreate either. So that's the one bit that's not right. But everything else is absolutely spot on. Well, you're finding this with a lot of old films. Like Demolition Man could not be any more relevant than it is now. Like, I mean, come on. What we're seeing going on right I remember, now. I remember everyone laughing at Demolition Man when it came out in the 90s and how spot on they're getting out. Well, have you... Have you had the recent thing that they've announced yeah. that they're trying to stop anyone born after uh, anyone born Smoking. after two thousand and nine won't be allowed to buy cigarettes? Yeah, it's it's totally like yeah. The, 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 the older I get, the more 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 libertarian I become. Like I'm just a full on libertarian, you know, like old school. I fucking hate government. Yeah. I would rather <laughs> just be left to my completely own. Do I don't want it. People are saying, "Are you going to vote for none? Fucking none of them." <laughs> At I, all. I, I, I probably I shouldn't say this on the stream. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say this on the stream, but I actually think Guy Fawkes kind of was on to saying, you know, he just saying. Hundred percent. Like, <laughs> he was the bloody most honest one ever. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I love the film V for Vendetta, and that's another one that's for very. Moving. You know, like when when you see the in that there's a pandemic and and then the government seizes more power and it becomes a dictatorship. It's like, wow, that's kind of what's happening now. Like, you know. yeah. It's precisely what I mean. The thing is, right? But what's really interesting about the Wachowski people is, um, <laughs> you know, you words carefully there, mate. <laughs> I have made some. Fucking phenomenal movie. Even Bang, right? Go back and watch Bang. It's a great gangster flick. Yes, it's subversive, but it's a good, good movie. That was the first movie I saw and seen it as. Then the, the Matrix, the kind of sequels are a bit iffy or whatever, but the first yeah. Matrix. Then V for fucking Vendetta. Um, yeah. there's, they've done some great, really superb movies. And you think that there was a lot of, like, should we call it um, hidden messaging or... Could you even say that, that there was a little bit of predictive programming in there, exposing the predictive programming? Or you could even argue that perhaps they were revealing the method. You know, yeah. I'm getting deeply conspiratorial now, revealing what's going to come. Yeah. But isn't it interesting what happened to them later on as, as individuals? Yes, I know. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? It's bizarre almost. You, of all the people... You never would have thought that that would have happened to them. Yeah. It's crazy. That's isn't what it? I think it's got some kind of like, you know, they say H.G. Wells and George Orwell and all these people were, were sort of like, you know, Fabian society or whatever. Uh, but, and, and they were there put into a role to sort of to reveal the method because there's this guy, this is going to sound really far out. I accept that. But there's this idea that, um, that the, the, the higher ups the, in the pyramid of power, the, you know, the hidden hand has to tell the, the bloody doyum and all the fucking plebs out there what's <laughs> to come. They, yeah. they will tell you what's going to happen, but you, because of their moral code, and then you have to accept it. The only way yeah. of not accepting it is by just ignoring it, yeah? But if you accept it and go along with it, then they've revealed what they're going to do, the revelation of the method. And it could be argued that the Wachowski people were put in there to do exactly that there's the hot take for the evening could be could be yeah it totally. did, you do notice there is always a similarity between 
movies and what's going on. Like, and quite often, like you say, the films will come first and then it will start going that way. Like at one point they were doing a lot of films about um, uh, aliens and stuff like that. And then people started saying, oh, the government's going to come clean and admit UFOs and all that stuff. And shortly afterwards, some of that stuff started to get released, didn't it? A hundred percent, man. If you watch you a know? movie, a hundred percent, all you got to do is watch Contagion, right? I was thinking of that. Is that the same? And have a look what happened during the uh, past couple of years. Okay? And it was, I was, I was singing from the fucking rooftops at the time, and everyone, nobody gives a fuck about what I was doing. You know what I mean? Just tell me to shut up. Shut, shut up. Man. I, I just didn't bother saying anything in the end. I thought, you know what? I'm just plugging along with my head down. Yeah, right. But, I, you know, a lot of people didn't. They're waking up now, perhaps. Yeah. Because I'm Tim Fall hat wearer, fucking conspiracy theorist, you know? Yeah. The thing is, though, but, it's a pity they didn't follow the film because they might have shut the boulders and. And all that before it got over it, but it didn't. It well, you, you, could, you could argue that you could argue that depending on, on where you stand on all that. It, mm. Yeah, there's a lot of things that could have been done and uh, were done, um, but it's all there. It's a revelation of the method. What's Rasmus saying? He's going to say something. No, you're wrong. Um, <laughs> I can't read this. So you think society would work, Petro? Uh, my, my society, listen, no, I don't, I, I'm not trying to rule anyone, but uh, the people that think there is a gender is hiding in every sentence. And no, I think it's very obvious that there's an agenda. All you've got to do is go on the World Economic Forum website right now and have a look for yourself. They're revealing the method, what's going to happen, what they want to implement right this second. So this isn't a conspiracy theory. It's a conspiracy fucking fact. You know, you should just do some research, mate. Well, it's the thing for me is when, when they start saying that people after 2009 won't be able to buy cigarettes. I mean, that, that, that what's that? That's, you're taking someone's right away to choose. Like, that shouldn't be allowed. Like, that's not a conspiracy. That's fucking happening. Like, this, this happened This happened during the, 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 the COVID situation where they were trying to force people into getting arm spears. Mm, right? Yeah. And... Whether you agree or disagree, I mean, obviously, it's pretty obvious where I stand on all this, but the fact that you're trying to force someone into a medical procedure is just out and out disgusting in my mind. Yeah. The same as, I don't agree, smoking's terrible for you, but if it's yeah. your choice to smoke, so be it. That's on you. Yeah. yeah. That's on you. If you're of age, that's on you. Don't, don't refuse, just because somebody, you know, just because you don't like it, people deserve a choice in life, in my belief. They deserve yeah. a choice. No, you shouldn't interfere. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely right. Do you think it'll go through the law? Do you think it'll get um brought through? Wouldn't surprise me. They're getting away with everything else. Me. These people, these these so-called conservatives, are are um, sorry to get political here, but they are controlling evil, horrible, disgusting people you know it's got the full I mean, support of labor isn't it that's why i think it'll go through because um they've already said that they're gonna um agree with it so well, this is no difference is there so this is what th th this <laughs> is your opposition they're fucking agreeing with everything so the opposition is agreeing. i just believe in life everybody needs to make their own decisions you can guide someone the right way but it's up to them to make their own concerted choice in life and that is a true liberty the true libertarian will say look do whatever you want. As long as you're not harming me, do whatever you think's right. True. As long as you're not <laughs> harming others. How you got to look at it, right, is banning smoking from anyone born from 2009 onwards. So someone that's born in 2008 that's a year younger can buy the cigarettes for the person. Yeah. It, none of yeah, it, 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 it won't stop. It won't stop anything. It just means that you'll have people doing it illegally. Then, if, won't if, if the government yeah. was really serious, if if the government really cared about health and wanted people to stop smoking, they would have fucking banned smoking years ago. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, I think we're getting bogged down in this too much. So let's move on to some. Well, more what, what's relevant though is cinema <laughs> and uh, cinema and smoking. You never, see it, you? you never see it. I was watching some of it yesterday, Scott, and they were smoking in it. And what was it now? But the weird thing was, it was somebody dead healthy and fit, you know, like jacked and that. And they were yeah. smoking a fag. And I thought, that's a bit fucking weird, isn't it? You know, because, <laughs> you 
you know, when I grew up, I used to love smoking, Scott. So did you, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, yeah loved it. Um, yeah, I did. We, did you smoke as well, Like, So mm. smoking was really great. And I'm so lucky that I'm, I feel so privileged that I smoked on a plane once, you know? <laughs> Funny <laughs> enough, I, I was just about to say, um, bizarrely, like I've got this thing about watching, you know, the old Black and White Twilight Zones? I love oh, watching them in wow. bed before I go to sleep, right? And I was watching one last night where um, they're this, all like, aircraft flying to London but they go like back in time or they go forward in time. I can't remember if they went forward or back, but the pilot's just sitting there smoking away a cigarette. And it, it, I did actually think you just don't see people smoking in films as much as what you used to. No, no. But yeah, no, I love no. those twilight You've really got ones. to go back sort of 10, 15 years and the amount of cigarette smoking that was in films was, is crazy. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, just touching on this very briefly, and they'll call this a conspiracy here as well. But again, it can be researched. Edward Bernays. Yeah. He was the person that pushed the um, smoking is acceptable for the housewives in the 1940s and 50s. Have a fucking look. It's there. So all of this was was brought about by the government anyway. Bloody the sheep are like us. Thought, yeah, it's called smoke. But the Native Americans have been smoking for bloody years. And none of their shit's got all those chemicals in. It's just pure tobacco. So mm. actually, I would argue that probably smoking's all right if you're growing your own. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Anyway, let's move right back into films, all right? Because I wasn't <laughs> going to get bogged down in this. So I'm going to mention this because Paul hasn't said much tonight, and I know he's watched one of these. Right? He watched uh, Godzilla um, versus Kong, which is the one before the new one. Just want to get your take, Paul. What did you think? So. Well, as I was talking about before, I actually watched the new one at the cinema first, and I'll not say anything about it. But I, I didn't. I only went as like a plus one because my brother-in-law is really into uh, uh, Godzilla, and he was going by himself, and I was like, "Oh, it's an excuse to just get out of the house and go to the cinema." So yeah. I went in there knowing nothing about it at all. I didn't even know it was like a sequel or, or whatever. Um, so a lot of the time I just didn't have a clue what was going on. So I just kind of sat there and enjoyed it for what it was. And I, I did kind of enjoy it, I must admit. But then I thought, maybe I should watch the first one. Just to, just to see, like, you know, what it was about. And I must admit, I kind of enjoyed it. And then I was speaking to Lee about it and I was saying, I might just end up watching them in reverse order. Going back over at, at this rate, and he was just like, "No, don't, just stop," <laughs> because what you're going to do is just going to ruin it completely. Like the, the one before was even worse. So um, I, I thought they were alright, but um, I wouldn't class myself as a huge Godzilla fan. But I just enjoyed it as like a just a monster movie sort of thing, like what we were seeing before. Yeah. Um, and I, I thought it was alright, but I, I had like lots of questions, like underground. How can it be light underground? Yes. Got, like uh, for me, I'm just like yes. that, that. I just keep trying to figure out how there's light underground. Yeah, where's the sun <laughs> coming from? I spent yeah. most of the film <laughs> trying to try to figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> and I kept asking my brother, who uh, my brother knows, who's meant to know, you know, all this stuff about um, Godzilla, and, and he couldn't explain it either. So I was like, oh well, I'm glad it's not just me. Yeah. It's, it, the, the thing is, I mean. Like I was saying, I, I've watched all of them in three days. Um, I really wish I hadn't. And it's all because Connor said, oh, I want to go and watch the new one, Dad. And I was like, well, do you remember the first one? He's like, no. I was like, I did take to go and watch it, but he was quite young. So I, I made the stupid decision, oh, let's watch them. Now, I hadn't seen King of the Monsters or Versus Kong. Um, King of the Monsters was horrendous. The CGI is terrible in that film. Like, oh man, that film's so bad on so many levels. Um, Godzilla versus Kong, I quite liked. I quite enjoyed that. Godzilla X Kong, not so much. So it's, it, I mean, if you look at them for what they are, dumb monster movies, then they're okay. You know, there, there's no, I say there's no messaging in there. There, there is a little bit. And, and in the most recent one, there's a lot of really stupid humor, which really got annoying. For me, it just felt like there was like way too little of Godzilla and way, way too much Kong. Like yeah. for me, it, it almost feels like it's the other way around. It's like a, it's a King Kong movie that's got Godzilla in, where yeah. Godzilla's meant to be like the the main thing. And just to reply to Tetley, um, when I did actually watch that one at the cinema a few weeks ago, 
when I come back, I did watch the original 1954 one straight after, like straight after as soon as we got back. I watched it and yeah, I loved it. I thought it was, it was exactly what I, what I was thinking it was going to be. Was it better? Was it cheesy? But yeah, it was. I was thought it was, was, really, it it was good fun. Was it better, Paul? Would you say the 1954 original was better? <laughs> the story was definitely, but obviously, you know the the doing what they could with the. You know, um, with Godzilla and that, and some of it looked like really good. Considering it was nineteen fifty four as well, you know, when it's when he's destroying the city and all that looked um, looked decent. But I like that at the beginning how you didn't really get to see much of him as well. So there was like the, you know, you were you were pining to see what what he's going to look like. Do you know what I mean? And then he makes his appearance and kicks right off. And yeah, it was good. Enjoy. This it. is a good comment that I agree with this, and this is the problem with a lot of the movies, like. Oh, that's direction. Transformers for me. <laughs> well, well, this is the thing, though. Transformers, Godzilla movies, they're exactly the same, aren't they? You know, there's two things fighting, and you can't tell who's winning because it's a CGI mess. Like, you know, it's exactly the same, isn't it? I mean, um, like, in the newest one, the... Oh, the, the, the... I forget what he is. I think he's a conspiracy theory guy, isn't he? Oh he's, yeah, he's got this. He's a, like a YouTube really annoying. Thing, he? He's really annoying in that film. It's like, it's like you, you remember the bit where, and I, I don't want to spoil it, so I'm not going to say exactly why. But something happens to one of the other characters, and I really wish it happened to him. Like, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't last as long as what I thought he was going to. That, yeah, that, yeah, that person. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I was just like, oh. I was ashamed. I was looking forward to seeing a bit more from him because he had a bit of like attitude about it. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't want to spoil it, but I was I was a bit good to see that one go. So then you were just left with the the generic people. The 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 one that you're on about, he was actually in Coronation Street, wasn't he? he was, That's he right, was he was. Actor, yeah. yeah, I was quite surprised to see him in that actually, if I'm honest. What um, I want to know is how come it took two people to fly the ship in the one before that, and now it only takes one. Uh, you'll, you'll notice, Paul, if you just watch them all, you'll notice constant inconsistencies all the way through. Like, I mean... Look at that. Nice. That's that's great artwork, that, isn't it? Yeah. I yeah, fucking I'm... love Godzilla, mate. I've got to tell you, it's one of my favourite ever franchises, but of course, being a total Toho snob that I am, I only watched the proper Godzillas. Um, like you say, they're going back to 54. Uh, it's interesting. Had you never seen it before, Paul? No, I, I'd seen ones. I used to watch like Jonathan Ross on a Friday, I think it was, or Saturday, and he used to have like he used to put like Japanese films on Channel Four. Mm -hmm. And there, there was a few Godzilla ones, and I watched them. But I think they were like late sixties, early seventies, I would say. Yeah, if I remember rightly. But I haven't. I'm going to watch them all the way through. Maybe not the new ones after uh, the new ones. But, the but the old ones. ones, Scott. Uh, sorry, Paul. The two old one. one. From 85 to sort of 2000 and uh, with the latest one, which is amazing, by the way, which we should be yeah, talking about. Yeah, I want to see that. I minus see. one, I went to the pictures to see. The only time I've been oh, this year. I thought I found it on the IPTV. <laughs> Early, I was like, yes. And it was just... It's sick, man. It's The, the, the missus loved it. I went, because uh, it had a short run at the pictures. Went to see it, of course. Um, but, yeah, but there's a lot of really good Godzillas in the 2000s, in the 80s. Where the, the the effects had improved, still a guy in a suit or whatever, you know, in robotics, but really cool. There's some, so yeah, these this goes up to seventy five, uh, fifty four to seventy five. But there's like thirty odd Godzilla movies. Now some of them can be found on YouTube, and I recommend all of them. I've downloaded is it, a bunch is it the of them. Oldest film yeah. series is it the oldest film series? Is it not? Sorry, the oldest film series. That's no. Going. No, there's older. Yeah, I mean, um, it's one. It's, it's up there. I don't know if uh, I'm like just thinking films, about. You know? The reason I'm saying no is because I realised there was quite a few sequels jo John Wayne was in, and if you go right back to sort of like the 1900s, there's a few sequels there as well. Aye, but like a film series it's, that's still going, where they're still making still them now. Going. Good be. question, Paul. I'll get back to you on that. I'm Does just, anyone in the chat know? <laughs> if anybody knows, it'll probably be Tetley. He knows a lot about all that. You've got to watch Minus One, though. It's, the story's amazing. I, I want to see it. 
It's it fucking brilliant. This kamikaze pot, it's World War Two, right? And mm. the Japanese are just being bloody blown to bits by the by the Allies, you know. And um it's it's the, so they're trying to rebuild Japan. And then the fucking threat of Godzilla comes on oh, comes off the shore onto the mainland, and it's just cool as fuck, man. Great acting, just yeah. suspenseful drama, very good special effects considering the budget. I think um, they make a, a black and white re release of minus one or yeah, they, they are do doing a black version. and white one. Yeah. 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 Minus colour, I think they're calling it, isn't it? In 2014, you know, when, when I realised they were going to remake Godzilla, we went to the pictures to see the first one. It had Brian Cranston in. Because um, I've just got to know him from, from Breaking Bad. So he's, a, he's a real cool actor, you know. Yeah. And uh, But it was so shit and so disappointing. You barely yeah. fucking saw Godzilla. It's like, I ain't, I'm not getting involved with this. It's the same as Kong. You know, like the OG Kong movies are... Even the ones in the seven, the one in the seventies is all right. Even the one in the eighties is all right. But the OG Kongs are the Peter Jackson one's good, right as well. But they, um, they, uh, they're just it's too. I don't know. I just can't get into it, man. I really enjoyed um, Skull Island. I actually like that. Skull film. Island. Hmm. I haven't seen it, Scott, and I think maybe I'm being too much of a snob. No, you should, you should. If you like Kong movies, I actually really enjoyed Skull Island. Skull Island. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a look, you know, and I have been meaning yeah, to see Skull the Island movie. wasn't too bad, actually. Yeah, I didn't mind it. Is that the one with Jack Black? <laughs> no, no, that was that horrible, um, the, was it Percy Jackson or whatever? Oh, Peter, was... Peter Jackson. Did you not Peter think that was a good, you not think that was no good, no? Did I say Percy? I said Percy, didn't I? Percy Jackson. <laughs> yeah, I meant Peter Jackson, yeah. The lightning uh, thief. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, why I said that. Yeah, the Peter Jackson one was terrible. The only bit I liked in that is the bit you know when they fall down into the into the like a ravine, and then all the bugs start eating them. Oh yeah, and there's a bit where that guy's screaming as his head's getting swallowed. Right? That, <laughs> there's a, there's that a bit is. like that on uh, on the um, on the Godzilla movie, on the recent one, or was it the one the the previous one? It was like a really similar sort of thing happened in that movie. Yes, I think you're right. There is something's eating him as he's screaming, right? And yeah, he put like the rock, like it's he's in that ravine, isn't he? And they're all coming down in on him. Yeah, he, trap, right. he traps yeah. them or something. He set a trap. Yeah, yeah. No, the Skull Island was good. Um, one of the problems I've got with these new Godzilla it. films is this whole thing that Godzilla's bringing balance and he's a good guy and this all. Whereas you look at minus one, he's what he's supposed to be, which is a monster that tramples <coughs> out of cities. I mean. <coughs> When, when you watch these new ones, like, people moaned about the level of damage in um, Man of Steel. And they were like, how did anybody survive after that fight? And it's like, you get to the Godzilla movies, and it's like, is there any cities left on, on planet Earth at this point? Because <laughs> they literally smashed every planet, like every area going on the planet. Because like, in, in each film, they completely destroy a city. And in fact, I think... In the latest one, I think they destroy most cities, don't they? If I remember right, I think <laughs> Rio gets hit definitely. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that bit where he, he gets up out the Colosseum. I'm, I'm spoiling a bit here, but there's a bit where he gets out the Colosseum because that's his new home, and he decides to start like running through all the bridges. And there's people in their cars on the bridges. He's just killed loads of people. Yeah, but. What government wouldn't have turned around and said, evacuate the city if Godzilla's sleeping in it? Like, because it, people are going to die. <laughs> that would be the logical thing, right? But no, people are still going about their everyday life with a 200 foot monster in the city. Like, what? <laughs> Who writes Godzilla this? felt like a little bit of a spoiled teenager, I think, in, yeah. in that one. Yeah. In the last one. I don't know. That's a vibe I've got. He does develop and change, though. In the Toho series, you know, it becomes yeah. some of them. Some of the movies are ultra goofy, but they're fun. You know, this is the point, isn't it? I, I can live and tolerate a, a silly Godzilla movie and a serious one. You know, it started off serious. The last one was serious. There's a few serious entries, but then there's some really great battles. You know, when yeah. you've got um, you, the likes of Mothra and all these other uh, characters that, that get involved in the Godzilla series. You sort of you, you want it to get outlandish, you don't yeah, mind because yeah. but 
again, it's a bit like the Americans. There's, there's an, oh, I hate to go on about it, but it's the truth. And I wouldn't have said this years ago, but it's a fact now. You're always waiting for some silly little bit of subversion, aren't you? Here we fucking just all you want to see. And maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe maybe there isn't too much of that in there, but I bet there is. All you want to see is some cool monster battles, and that's it. But I, I guarantee they're shoehorning some intersectional stuff in there. I, I, am I right, uh, Lee? You alluded to that. Um, th there are definitely little messages in there, Reckon. yeah. Um, like, for example, in the latest one, you've got the girl that's the key to everything. Yeah. You know, like, she's just got to this place, and all of a sudden she's an expert who just happens to be deaf, so she's got a disability. Oh. And somehow, somehow she understands everything. <laughs> Somehow she understands everything better than the people who live there, right? And she can control the animals and all this stuff she can do. And it's like, oh, yeah, because we ain't seen this millions of times already in every other new film that's out. Yeah, it, it really is there, and it's annoying. <laughs> it really oh, is. Oh, okay. You see, see to me now, that, that just ruins the whole objective. All you want to do is just have some normal people, you know, and, yeah. and, and just these gods. This is what the Japanese do. They don't. You know, they don't make it sort of, um, it's just regular people, you know? Do you, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? Like, nobody would give a shit if there's like, even if there was a couple of, um, you know, like a, 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 a homosexual couple or whatever. So what? You, you know, that it, that's probably, it's kind of real life, but it's when it's constantly thrown, you know, it always there, isn't it? Yes. You know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. you're telling me an advert now. Just a slight uh, diatribe. Oh, I know I'm exactly what you're saying. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Me as well, let's actually count numbers. We actually have a score system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black, black fella, white woman. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. A couple of blokes snugging. A yeah. couple of a couple of women like stroking their hair, like side parted hair with the fucking yeah. blue thing down there. You know what I mean? No ring. Yeah. And uh, it's just like every bastard. I was watching yeah. the football the other night. I watched the Villa. Oh, that's Park. a whole other story. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't bastard believe the adverts. It's just like it's it's like it's a joke, isn't it? Yeah. This is the thing, though, right? I mean, if they did it subtly, no one would say anything. But it's because they've got to hit you over the head with this mallet every time, aren't they? Like yeah. it, to a point where now you can't help but notice it. And this is it's the thing, right? The thing People, is what. The, guy, the guys I knew back in the day loved their underground community, right? I've even been to a couple of gay bars. I didn't give a fuck. You know, back yeah. in the day, uh, Nightingales in Brom. I don't who cares, man. As long as they don't try and bomb me in the fucking toilet. <laughs> I'm all right. You know, it's cool, man. They're just people. You know, you do, you like Eddie Murphy said, you could go with a game of tennis with a gay person. It's just that at the end, they'll say, right, well, tomorrow I'm going to go get a beer. He's going to say, right, well, I'm going to go and suck some cock. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> Did he actually uh, say that? It's what Eddie Murphy in, in uh, Delirious says. Very, yeah, he very does funny. say that in Delirious. He does, yeah. And uh, yeah. this is different. Nobody cares. And I, I actually think to surely some of them are getting pissed off with this because it's like overexposure. Oh, they are. Oh. Yeah, they are. Um, so I watched a thing recently, Pierce Bro uh, Pierce Brosnan. Um, Pierce, um, oh, Christ. Why Morgan. I, Morgan. Why can't I think of names today? Like, yeah, Piers Morgan did a thing recently where he had um, uh, he's one of his co-presenters. She's a, a young black lady, and he had a uh, nerd rotic on there, and he also had critical drinker on there. And and then they had this <laughs> other guy that was into all the messaging crap, right? No. And every time he said something, right, bear in mind he he was a black guy, and every time he said something, the young black co-presenter that's on there with Piers, she disagreed with everything he said. And she said, like, she didn't like that they keep forcing this into stuff because she, if by her own admission, said it makes her look bad. And she's right, it does, right? Yeah. This this is the thing. We didn't care about any of this. Like, we, we didn't. But now when they keep shoehorning it in and wrecking the stories just to shoehorn that in, that's when we get an issue. But, of course, what you get then is you get labelled by people that you're, you know, you're this and you're that. Because you're saying, why do you keep doing this? You're asking a question and they're labeling you. And it's funny because we're told we've got to be 
tolerant of everyone. But the people who are saying this are not tolerant of everyone themselves, are they? No, of course you not. Know, it's a, it's a, <laughs> so. they're, they're not tolerant of anyone's uh, difference of opinion. And the, the, the trouble is, you see, is that, you know, this has been going on for some time, this overt political correctness and everything like that, and it's come into the films, and like you say, nobody give it. Nobody genuinely, if you, unless you were some sort of vile person, right, who went out of your way to make life miserable for, to other people who had a different lifestyle to your own. Now, the, there's a word for people like that. It's a being a cunt, isn't it? You know, <laughs> and it's just unnecessary, right, and just vulgar. Now, yeah. you don't have to approve of everything these people do as long as they're not harming me. It just goes back to this thing all the time. As long as it's not harming me or the people around me. But when you, when it's overexposed all the time and it's become, it's normalised to the point where, you know, what's coming next, you know? Yeah. Is yeah. it, it going to be paedophilia? I mean, that's the logical thing now, isn't it? It's like, you know, how, how, how the, 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 the slippery slope theory. Yeah. What is next? And, and there, is, there is signs of that potentially happening. Maybe that's a little bit far out for people, but I don't know, because I just think the, the, these kind of transgressive people push an agenda that's so far out, yeah, so evil and so warped, so inverted, that it, it, all of these things become more and more and more and more and more uh, normalised. Then, then what is it? Fucking animals and shit. Next. What, what, a, what a thing, especially when you're, you know, you've got people in that scope getting done for doing this sort of stuff. I mean, look what's happened with the BBC in the last few years. I mean, you know, there are literally people that were on the TV that were doing this to kids, you know, so, you know, it's don't, not out of the range of possibility. Think, though, don't you think, though, especially with Hollywood, um, I think how they're pushing these stereotypical minority things into into films is offensive. Yes. To those minorities, because yeah. obviously... I know lots of gay people. I know lots of lesbian people. I know some transgender people. I get on with them really well. I get on with anyone, right? Uh, as long as they're good people. And yeah, and that's, that's the important thing especially, to know, isn't it? Especially, you're not seeing it so much now, but you have that brattish, moody, yeah, entitlement woman character that is a lesbian that is just pushing. A completely, I think it's offensive. I think it's offensive. The stereotypical, yeah. stereotypical yeah. lesbian, yeah. like man, a uh, sort of dikey clothes, skinhead, yeah, butch, butch and, and it's, all done, it's all done OTT. And you know, when it's done properly, I've got no problem with it. But I, I like find bound, like bound. There's, there's the example. Bound is the example where they, where they were kind of, you know, like they were likable. They were just human beings, likable people, not playing to this horrible stereotype, negative and men hating and all this stuff. And, that, and like you say, they've always existed. Hmm. Well, That's not as many as, as there are now because it's so many. The, the reason I say this is I've just watched, and this is relevant to the stream, is hmm. I, I just watched a thing on Netflix called Baby Reindeer. Hmm. And that pushes on a lot of sexuality from a real real standpoint and that was a very powerful tv series i tell you what that's one of the best tv series i've seen in a very long time and it touches on so much and it was brilliantly written brilliantly acted and you fucking believed it do you know what they were real people in that and that's when it can be powerful when you want to get a message across or understanding across to people or to the audience and do it in something like that. That's why I said earlier, there's a, there's a place for all this uh, messages or whatever you want to call it, agenda pushing. There's, there's places where you can get that across and get it across very creatively and, and, um, and, and that you believe it and you buy into it. And I'll tell you what, that baby reindeer was really emotional and really captured me. I sat and binged the whole thing yesterday because I thought it was fantastic television, which oh. I honestly believe, it, it, it's sorry to say, but like when I took my daughters to go and see Ghostbusters, there was 12 other people in that cinema 
eight o'clock on the first Saturday night of wow. Ghostbusters, there was 12 people in that cinema watching that film. Now you go back, a lot of people will ban the the, the pandemic, whatever, but cinema is killing itself in doing what they're doing. Yeah. With these films, right? Well, why would you pay for a film that could be really bad? You could yeah. just stream it for free. Right? But yeah, but the thing is, is is television, I think, is is kind of filling that void and it's really catching up in making things a lot more believable. Yeah. So, you I've been watching some fantastic TV series and it's replacing modern cinema for me. You know, if I want to watch yeah. I'll go and watch a film from 20, 30 years ago, 40 years yeah. ago, 50 years ago. But if I want to watch something current and new and I want to buy into it, you know, a lot of people will bash Netflix. But I'll tell you what, they've turned a corner. I think they're ahead of the game. And that baby brain deer was fantastic. I, I thought that so, was really some good. Of the, some of the busiest times I've been at the cinema recently is when they actually put all films on. Yes. Yeah. Like the, yeah. the Dun Alien up here and... Yeah, the place was absolutely heaving. It was packed because a lot of people, especially my age, obviously weren't around or weren't old enough to go to the cinema to see it. Yeah, so that's I've true. only ever watched it on TV. So to be able to go and watch that at the cinema was like, it's worth the effort because I wanted to see it at the cinema, you know? That's a glass of water. Yeah, absolutely right. What is it worth? Well, I mean, one of the biggest problems with, with cinema now is if you notice, like... All these directors wanna or writers or whatever want to put themselves into everything. Have you noticed that? Like, yeah. for example, with the acolyte, the woman that's done that, she's um she's gay. So straight away, what she's done is she's bugged a load of women in that are all just like her. And it's like, well, you know, we don't want to see you in the film. Like that's not what we're that's not what we're getting these TV programs or films. We're not paying for them to see the director in it. That's not what we want, is it? Like, And, and the other thing you get is about, um, oh, I want to put like real life stuff into it. Like, I remember when Picard season one came out, apparently that was all based around Brexit and Donald Trump. <sighs> like, I, I don't want to see that shit in a TV program. Where's the escapism of no. that? Exactly. <laughs> you want to escape the real world, not to be reminded of it. There's, there's a place for, you know, sort of social commentary, and I, I really enjoy social commentary from both sides. A lot of real lefty shit, actually. So if you go back and uh, think about the stuff I, I, I really enjoy, a lot of it's kind of left-leaning, but it's kind of like old-school left. Mike Lee... Um, in in particular springs to mind and this guy and also uh what's his bloody name um god his name eludes me now you know sweet 16 movies like that kez oh just gone oh, yeah. but kez. Ken Loach, Ken Loach, <laughs> What a super left wing, super left wing. I mean, but of course, Ken Loach has, has got into trouble with the Labour Party for having a, a certain view on a certain state in the Middle East, um, that isn't Pakistan, but. Again, you know, sometimes this happens and there's this kind of bizarre kind of warping. Um, but what, what my point here, you, what you were saying about TV, Scott, you're absolutely yeah. right. It's like we, we, here's there are a few things, and one of them is you, you have to see, uh, and it was my cool hand to be fair, he, he got this one right. And Lee and Lee, um, Retro Chef, who recommended Mr. In Between, yeah, you said that. Yeah, brilliant. Fantastic yeah. TV series, that. Fantastic. Really good, right? Really, really good. Who, who's in that? That's Australian, or is it New Zealand? Oh, okay. New Australian. Australian, Australian. Yeah. What's it about? It's kind of like an Australian <laughs> version of Breaking Bad. Yeah. But real. Oh, okay. But real. Oh. But real. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. Honestly, it's brilliant. <laughs> That typical Australian kind of, you know, laid back kind of attitude, a lot of a lot of swearing, a lot of things that you don't sort of expect to be in there, not in any way, shape, or form subversive. Yeah. At all. In fact, the opposite. It's kind of like someone normal's written this. There's no <laughs> sort of shoehorning in you know, these characters. And and we can the thing is, people always talk about look, we're making these new type of films because there are the, the, the sections of society that it represents okay fair enough 
and that's always happened. Like I mentioned in my video, if anyone can actually hear it, the audio is so low. But anyway, um, I'm, I mentioned Derek Jarman. So there's always been gay and lesbian cinema directed at, 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 at that demographic. Fair enough. Okay, I look, I'm not about banning anything, no. right? But it don't represent me. So where's the shit that I like? Yeah. yeah? Yeah. It doesn't represent then maybe that's me. why there's nobody at the cinema. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, because it's, it's a small demographic, isn't it? Society or whatever. You're, yeah, supposed to, it... you're supposed to spend your 40 quid when you buy your popcorn, your tickets, and sit down in that cinema yeah. to escape reality for a good hour and a half. And you're just not getting that at the minute in cinema. Well, the thing is, when you don't go and watch their rubbish, then they start labelling you as the R word, don't they? You know, like... <laughs> Yeah, right, yeah. Yes, yes. I'm all the things you say. Own it. Yeah. Say, cause, cause the thing is, you, you, the, the, you, no matter how much you try and sort of say, oh, I'm not this, I'm not the sexist, and blah, 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 it's never good enough. Yeah. And, they, they, and you never apologise to these motherfuckers. Mm. You never give in, you never apologise, you just dismiss them. Don't, yeah. don't fuck their films. Go and watch them. There's plenty. Go and watch Mr. In Between instead. There's shit out there. So I'll tell you what was another really good TV series, and I really thoroughly enjoyed it, and I binged that as well. Was the new ha um, not Halo? Uh, Fallout. Fallout. Yeah, Fallout. I've not that got a chance to watch that yet. That I've is. seen the first episode, and it starts off in incredible. Yeah. I must admit. Uh, it's yeah, really, I'm really looking forward you know, to the rest. Is that a lead, or is it a bloke lead? Uh, female. No, female. Female lead. Not watching it. <laughs> but she's a good female lead. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I thought she was really. Is it Angela Mao or Cynthia Rothrock? Is she what? Is it Cynthia Rothrock or Angela Mao? If it's neither of them, I'm not interested. <laughs> Definitely neither of them. No. I, I tell you what, it was. A... You cared for the characters. And and you're gonna be pleasantly surprised in some of the actors that they've chosen to be in there, Pedro. Oh, well, you know what? I, to be honest, I've I've gone so cynical now, uh, and and I'm not dismissing what you're saying, Scott. I'm always prepared to give something a chance. But you know what I do? I go onto Google. I go onto IMBD reviews now. When, when I think about a series, and I always go to the worst rated. So I go to Star Star One and read what they say, and I never the critics, never the critics, always the audience, right? And I'd sort of get a general idea if I want to watch something from from the the worst reviews. <laughs> ah, Tetley, there he's saying about free body problem that started off so promising. Yeah, I, I heard that was boring. Weeks. That's why I didn't watch it. It, it fell very flat. It, it contradicts itself as well constantly. Yeah, it does. But no, yeah. honestly, Fallout is re very refreshing. I don't want to give too much away because it will spoil it. But it I think I think it's especially good that it's actually based on a computer game. It's like a, like a yeah. show that's and they don't always work too well when they're trying no. to do that. But I think this one really no. has. I, well, I, I it's, it's good. funny you're talking about games because um, Jamie mentioned something that I was going to touch on because already um, it's much more was saying about video games I mean, and and movies are meant to be escapism, which we was just touching on. But then Jamie then said, but games are getting bad for it now as well. And he's right, they are. Um, I don't know if you've heard about the controversy about the new game called Stellar Blade. Have you heard about that? No. no. Well, all the blokes are going, oh, I love this game. For once, a woman is allowed to look beautiful and look like a woman. Oh, right? yes. Oh, yeah. And they're, and they're all one... getting attacked now because of what they said, yeah. Who are they getting, getting attacked, attacked by? Um, who are they getting attacked by, Lee? Well, who do you reckon? <laughs> you mean the sort of like the, the, the sort of SJW types? Yeah, yeah, exactly that. Yeah. In um, real life, in real and... life, here's a serious question. I don't know, and I, and and I'll I'll be honest with you. There are two people in my life that I knew pretty well who have become, shall we say, extremely left wing now, like. Almost like a mean, mean worthy left wing, right? One of them, I was the best man at his wedding, right, 10 years ago. So he's so, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, yeah. But most people don't really give a shit, do they? From what I can gather, most people That's aren't. Right. People, yeah. is, that, is that fair? Is that realistic, do you think? Yeah, most people don't. Yeah, I, I don't agree with that. Yeah. Um, I don't know what my point was. Oh, yeah. 
um the, yeah so so the, so these people are coming from somewhere Do, is it fair because i think jamie brought something up earlier that was interesting about divide and rule yeah 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 but... is there some is it maybe this is a bit conspiratorial or whatever do you think this has been devised to just just to sort of bring people to uh, to different sides and just to complain about this stuff all the time right from one uh, from one viewpoint to another viewpoint then we're sort of maybe just wasting our time yeah while something else is going on yeah. While something else is going on more important in the back in the background. I mean, yeah, yeah. an idea is, is, is that anything in that, do you think? I, I think so, yeah. Possibly, yeah. I, I, I agree. And in fact, a lot of the time, you know, a lot of this that goes on, especially on Twitter and things like that, they're not even people that are doing this. It's bots. Bots. Yeah. They're, they're stirring up the arguments. Troll you know? farms as well. Yeah. Farms. Yeah. There's a lot of that. Yeah. So, like, it would be fair to say then, that, that there would be people even in the camps that we would perhaps agree with that are stirring the pot. So they could be like, oh, this is going to sound out there, right? But they could be some sort of like uh, operatives for the government or working in conjunction with them to try and just push a particular narrative, you know, uh, well, control the opposition, as it were. Well, it's not out of the realms of possibility. I mean, we already know that all the big tech companies are in with government. So, yeah, it's not out of the poss world of possibility at all. So, mm. you know, mm -hmm. Google and all that lot, they're all involved with the government. We know this. So Facebook's no different. If anyone thinks Facebook is, then they're wrong. They're definitely involved with the government. They're as good as admitting it. So, yeah, you know, if you, the minute you've got tech companies involved, without a doubt, you've got something going on in pop culture in general then haven't you so yeah i think you make a good point you know critical drinker i'm just, this is movie related here i think look you, you're ascended you, you ascended pretty quickly to through the youtube ranks right having this opinion that was against the mainstream a lot of it was quite amusing he's a good writer and stuff and and you know his, yeah. his spine off is pretty decent but you know uh that's all i have for today go away now oh, right oh, yeah <laughs> don't you think though you think right now you're on fucking Piers Morgan with nerd nerd right, right? There's something slightly contrived about that. I ain't gonna have fucking any of us on there, are they? You know, like no. he's, he's just become like this megastar, and he's been able to get away with saying quite a bit, but he's also very careful about not saying certain things. So he'll ride the, the wave of like this anti wokeism, but he won't fucking touch certain subjects that are a bit too, a bit too sort of edgy. Yeah, we see. I, I would say with with critical drinking, yes, but nerd I mean, one of his recent streams actually got taken down because he he had a guest on that said quite a bit that shouldn't have been said. Let's just say so. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'd say that um, critical drinker is more careful and selective about what he says. He's I more protective of his brand. Yeah, Gary's yeah. not though. Gary's not like nerd no, I, He'll, he'll no, say exactly what he thinks. So I'll tell you what the difference is here, though, and this is interesting, isn't it? The Yanks always can go a bit further because they have genuine freedom of speech, don't they? Yes. Well, this is it. Yes, this is it. Yeah. So they're able to, should we say, you know, they could mention a certain uh, place <coughs> and uh, discuss those certain people without kind of much, uh, as, as much issues. And do they, they do. Yeah, they do. If, if you haven't had a chance, watch on a Friday, watch Friday Night Tights. Just watch one episode. You'll see what I'm on about. <laughs> and I bet yeah. the, the comments are all talking about certain things. Right, interest. You see, a lot's moved on since I, I bothered watching these things. You know? Put it this way. I, I watched one of the streams where one of the people on the panel rung one of the others, and when he answered the phone, he just went, you're gay, and then hung the phone up. So you literally have that going on on their streams. So they do get away with a lot more, like they do do stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, what you got to remember in Scotland, I mean, there's, they're trying to pass a law at the moment that you can be arrested for saying Thanks, certain man. things, aren't they? So, it has been passed. It's an actual law. Um, yeah. they they've got a year's worth of hate um, speech reports in the first weekend. Yeah, and the best thing is this Hamza guy who's in charge of Scotland now. Don't ask. Um, 
he he's been reported himself for a speech that he made, which was very anti um, white, and uh, he's he's been reported via his I, own law. <laughs> that was anti white though. So I've seen that's such a dreadful thing that he said. He just hates white people, doesn't he? <laughs> Well, and, and the people, the two, good the people we way. have in, in the uh, in the where it's called uh, the houses of parliament in Scotland, and the, the, the barrister is weight. The such and such is weight. I saw it was awful. He's such yeah. a cunt, he isn't he? Hamza Youssef. I'll be well. It's going to be interesting to see what happens at general election time in Scotland. Put it that way. <laughs> you think people have woke up to it there though? Uh, Paul, I think, I think it's important to um, the, there's a lot of people who are new with SNP supporters who are not necessarily as strongly uh, like don't feel as strong about it. They realise that the the party itself is just to gain independence, and uh, unfortunately, they're absolutely shocking at running a country. Like they're incredibly bad <laughs> at doing it. Well, and if anything goes wrong, that. they just blame <laughs> Westminster and. They keep getting found out that that's not actually the case. Fucking English bastards! Yeah, so. Well, it's funny enough. I mean, like, going back to what we were saying about all the DEI stuff, I mean, Disney are getting sued right now, aren't they, by a couple of people. Are yeah. they? Yeah. I didn't know that. I haven't been keeping abreast of them. For what? Well, Gina Carano's um, going after them because they sacked her, didn't they? Um, so when she was doing The Mandalorian, she put a post up. And she was basically comparing certain groups to what happened during World War II with the anti-Semitism, if shall we say, right? And she oh. basically, if you like, got fired and cancelled over that post. Yet, yet her co-star, who played the Mandalorian, he put a post hey, up. Yeah, he put a post up, and he basically said that Trump supporters were n words not not not, not 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 that n words the n word as in like german n words that oh. one, that one. yeah <laughs> that's that's what he put on twitter <coughs> he kept his job she got fired so she's going after him and not only that i mean they discredited her all over the place she got bullied on social media I, and all just, sorts yeah it isn't just the fact that she got fired from the mandalorian and disney she got blacklisted didn't she yes they, they they basically pressured other companies and other um studios and directors and that not to hire her they went out of their way to make up loads of stuff that was slanderous that wasn't true and she was bullied all over the internet because of it as well so as a result She's now being bankrolled by Elon Musk, and she's whoa, going whoa, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All so, right, okay. <laughs> and, and he's just... he's bankrolling it. He'll end up buying Disney, won't he? Well, you know why he's bankrolling it, didn't you? Because Bob Iger made the mistake of trying to make everyone else, because he again, then bullying people, tried to make everyone pull the advertising from Twitter, didn't he? Ah, oh, really? right, okay. Yeah, that's why. Do you remember that press conference I kept sharing where? Uh, Elon Musk tells him to go fuck himself, and he's, he's, he's lost a lot of money on Twitter by the by the looks of it as well, like a, a serious yeah. amount. Yeah, he's an interesting um, phenomenon, isn't he, Elon Musk? I mean, I, I, my my opinion is he's still definitely controlled opposition, but he's kind of does things on his on his own back. You know, he's got his own kind of viewpoint, hasn't he? I don't think I think he genuinely hates the the. the the kind of the world that we inhabit now. Well, well I mean, the, the way things uh, there is no civil discourse. You know, you could have. Can you imagine if we were having a conversation now about bloody, you know, Israel and Gaza? It would just it would be taken down in two seconds, wouldn't it? Unless you show certain viewpoints, I, I reckon. You know, yeah. unless you sort of supported a certain um, narrative, you couldn't just have a civil discourse. About anything, yeah. Trump. I mean, there's another one, Donald Trump, the world's most maligned president. You know, like why hasn't that? You know, since Biden's been in, nobody said anything. You've got a bloody senile, degenerate yeah. child sniffer in fucking office, right? And nobody said fuck all. And listen, I'm no Trump fan. Let it be known. I'm, I'm like, I. But out of the two. He's, he's the guy, you know. If I had to, if I, someone put a gun to my head and said, who are you voting for? It's going to be Trump. But I'm going to vote for either. Let yeah. it be known for, for many, many reasons. I actually almost feel sorry for Americans having to choose 
because like it's not a great choice. Yeah, it's not a good choice either way, really. Is it? Well, yeah, you're right. right. You look at us, we haven't got a great choice. Well, right? yeah. No, no, yeah. that's true. Choice. We've got yeah. Labour or Labour Light. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, we've got like <laughs> neo Marxism 101 and neo Marxism 102. It's we're fucked. This could the country, listen, let's be honest, this is why I don't care anymore. England, Britain is done. Yeah, it needs it's a revolution. Done. It's done, mate. It's done. You, you'll be all right in Sussex. It's fucked. It's fine. <laughs> right. I'm going to bring this back to films, right. Because we've been going on about this, I think, for a while. <laughs> <laughs> but here's something that might surprise you. So when I come back from Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, I was that depressed. I actually looked at Connor and said, do you want to watch a decent film? Oh. Right. And he said, can we watch Tokyo Drift? And I said to him, oh, cool. I don't know if I'd cast it as a decent film, right? Now, bit, I'll, I'll get to it, right? I was like, I don't know if I cast that as a good film, but you know what, right? As time's gone on, that film's got much better <laughs> because because it's been diluted. <laughs> well, well, because when that came out, for its time, it was considered a bad film. But if you now compare that to the crap we're getting now, you actually realise that actually that ain't a bad film at all. It's certainly not the worst Fast you know and Furious what? film. Actually, that is my favourite of all the Fast and Furious films. Yeah, but it, it might well be. But, uh, I mean, as a whole, it was considered the worst one. But, I mean, <laughs> when, you, when you start getting to cars taking out submarines and Pontiacs <laughs> going into space, I mean, it's certainly not the worst Fast and Furious film. It's definitely not as bad as Hobbs and Shaw. That's terrible. You know, where you've literally got the bionic man, right? It's nowhere near as bad as them. But I would also argue that it's better than bloody the new Ghostbusters and probably better than the new Godzilla. <laughs> and this is a film that people said was terrible. So one thing I'm going to implore everybody to do as we're getting near the end of this stream right. is go back and all them films that you thought were rubbish, go back and watch them again. And then it's you come back and you let me know if they're as bad as you remember or are they better than the new stuff we're getting. The one I'm going to go back to next is Alien Three, because of the what you I've shared done before, that and it's not that and, bad. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to just give it a, a fresh start. And Alien yeah. Three had its budget cut right in post production, and that's why that film. Oh, it's not the, the only story reason. was rewritten so many times. So many times, times maybe more. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's so much. It's amazing that that film actually come out and it was half decent. Yeah. But you know what, future, uh, man? I mean, it's a there's a lot to be said. You could write essays on that movie. Yeah. It's got some parabels in there. Yeah. yeah but you know what? It's still better than Prometheus, and it makes more sense still. Mm. <laughs> so, you know what? <laughs> going back I to Ghostbusters. Enjoy Prometheus. Killed, Ghostbusters 2 killed the franchise. There was never another Ghostbusters film for all those years because... It's still better than the new one. flopped at the cinema. But that's a tremendous film. Yeah, it's, it's cool. It's in some way. ways, it's superior to the original. Yeah. In some, some, in some ways. ways, I'd agree. Yeah, I know. But, I should add as well. Like after when they did Afterlife, someone said that they thought when they did Afterlife they'd circumvented Ghostbusters too, but they haven't because in this new one they do actually refer to the walking of the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, and they show you the footage, so they actually have brought that back into yeah. canon now. The reason why Ghostbusters <laughs> 2 flopped in the cinema is that I had to compete with Tim Burton's Batman. Well, yeah, that's... Yeah. That yeah. The following weekend, that's what killed it. You know, yeah. you, you hadn't had a Batman film since, what, that one in the 50s? Or, the, you know, the TV show, like, feature-length thing? I don't think there has been a film so eagerly anticipated and hyped as that Batman film. Everyone just couldn't wait to see Batman. The fucking yeah. Batman pack, the Amiga Batman pack. Oh, you know? yeah. yeah. You know, it's just... No, you're talking. It was massive, wasn't it? I, I think people, unless you grew up in that time, you can't understand how... That was scary, mega. That a mega. superhero film was being brought back to the cinema because Superman kind of burnt it out. It, it, you know, that, that film was laughed out of all the movie studios, they tried to push to get bring that Batman film out for about a decade, I think. 
really. You no, know, what's funny about that film is that they've done such a good job with Jack Nicholson as the Joker that when right. when they tried to or went to do Joker again in the Dark Knight, I remember being one of them, and I <coughs> openly admit that I was wrong. I remember coming out going, "You will never beat Jack Nicholson as the Joker." And then Heath Ledger did his joke, and I was like, "Okay, I might have been wrong." It, like, was, it was a different Joker, but I think that's why. I, I, yeah. I think if he, if they try to do the same Joker with anyone, yeah, else, it would have been. It, it would have just failed. But because yeah. he put his own like stamp on it, or it was a different character, then they're, they're both different for different jokers. reasons. There's only two Jokers, and that's um, Oscar. What's his name? You went about the original one from back the in the day. The 60s one. Yeah. He's, he's Caesar Romero. That's it. He's Joker number one. Joker number two, closely followed, is Jack Nicholson. I'm yeah. sorry, just because he's brown bread, right? Heath Ledger, right, who's also in Mike's favourite film, Brightback Mountain, um, is not that good of a joker sorry it's really oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's good it's an interesting performance <laughs> but if he wasn't you know fucking six feet under you wouldn't have these people going yeah it's fucking amazing yeah it's all I, right i don't know though no, i don't know i mean do, do you read the comics pedro i do yeah and and um I, the, what i don't what I, my issue with the nolan films i loved i really liked the third and i liked bane Okay, yeah, there is an yeah. exception. I really like the third. The second, I think they're a bit too draggy. They yeah, drag yeah. on and fucking on and on and on. Sorry, Michael Keaton is an amazing um, Bruce Wayne. Yes. And, and, and encapsulates that. He's also a really cool Batman. Yeah. Now, I get that he perhaps didn't have the physique, so Christian Bale had the physique over him, yeah. Perhaps some of the movements over him. But the yeah. the... He's Bruce Wayne, nah, man. <laughs> and I think Christian Bale's a magnificent actor. Yeah, he's Bruce man. Wayne. Just come on, I don't know. Just there, to be there, are, there are times when he's very good as Batman, but there's also times when I, I don't like him as Batman. I, I out of the two, I, I prefer Michael Keaton. I definitely yeah, do prefer definitely him because Michael Keaton's more like the Batman in the comics. Um, yes, yes. But that's the other thing, like the, thing, the Tim Burton Batman film. Is the only Batman film that has captured the comics, I think. Yeah, personally. I agree with you because it's got mm. it's got the light and dark, um, Scott. It yeah, has no. an element of the comedic, an element of the comedic. It also has that, you know, the background and the way Tim Burton, because he's a real artist, he just has this sort of surrealist kind of quality to it. Yeah. And then Nolan just goes with the brooding darkness. Bleh. That's all it is. Who and Batman? Well, no, Tim, Tim Burton likes gothic stuff, which is why gothic. it was perfect for Batman because it's the and also, gothic. Well, gothic. Yes, how yeah. Batman was filmed, how that Batman '89 was filmed, was one of the last Hollywood blockbuster films that followed a traditional Hollywood style of film, as in like each thing was an act. It was almost like a like a theatrical play in some ways. And I, I don't think there's really been a modern film that's done that so well. Um, the problem is with Nolan, right, is I thought the Nolan Batman films were amazing for the time. But when I look back, I kind of blame them for how poor and sterile and realism cinemas become today. Yeah, yeah. This is the point. It's like the Nolan sort of directional of those films. Why does the penguin, you know, the new penguin look nothing like the penguin, really? Whereas exactly. the penguin, Danny DeVito, looked like the fucking penguin. Yeah. Got, yeah. Why have you got to have Batman look real? Why have why has he got to drive a real tank or a real car? I no, that. Yeah. Batmobile was cool as fuck. Yes, you know, yes. In the 89 Batman film. You know, I had this debate with someone in my That's shop. That's my favourite Batmobile, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Oh, by <laughs> the way. This guy was a massive Batman fan. He said, what's your favourite Batman Batmobile? And I said, the 89 Batmobile. Yeah, without, definitely. Without, without a shadow of a doubt. doubt. Yeah. With the shell went, oh. thing, it's just... And, he went, yeah. oh, and, he, and I went, what's your favourite one? And he went, oh, the Christopher Nolan oh, tank. Oh, oh, he doesn't know what he's about. Because it's real. That could be a real car. And I'm like, yeah, but Batman's not real. Was it like, what? Character. It's supposed to be... <laughs> You know, it's, we, we, we lose, and you're right, Christopher Nolan is a cynical sod in, in his movies. Now, I think he's like really overrated. He's a competent filmmaker, but 
he, he, he has this, he, all of his stuff looks like everybody else's. He's not a creative genius like Tim Burton is. They are miles apart. Yes, Heath Ledger's performance, I was a bit harsh on him, it was decent, it was good, it was different. It's not a patch on Jack Nicholson, though. It's just what? not. The Jack Nicholson embodies the Joker like Cesar Romero does. Yeah, yeah. You know this new Joker movie as well, actually. I mean, I, there is a, I don't mind the new Joker, old, um, what's his name? Fucking Walk, River Walking Phoenix. Phoenix. Walking Phoenix. Walking Phoenix. I think that's not bad. I'm going to say that. Yeah, but it's a not new what one's going to be a musical. It does look a bit weird, doesn't it? The new one's going to be a musical. And um, I, if it is, I'm not even watching that because I hate fucking musicals. I can't stand them. Did you not like the first one, though? I did enjoy yeah, I the liked, first one. I liked the first one. Yeah, mm. I did. I've got it. I've got it on Blu-ray. Yeah, it's a good film. Yeah, it, it's, it's didn't not try... what I've watched again, I must admit. I, I, I did go to the cinema to watch it. But, yeah, it I don't know. It wasn't... Sorry, Paul, carry on. I don't know. It's just it's just not one I would go back to and watch again, personally. It's a bit but... pompous, isn't it? It's a bit there's a bit of it's a bit wanky in places, don't you think? Do you know what I mean? Like with all the dancing yeah. and all that, and the old Gary Glitter. He's he, <laughs> nice payday for Gary there. Yeah, but you know what? The thing without film that's is right. that's that's a thinking man's film because like with that, yeah. you you got to look at it from the point of view of is half this stuff actually happening? Because mm -hmm. that film. Mm -hmm questions whether he's actually doing this stuff or whether it's all in his head. It's a great film for mental health, I think. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. It really yeah. makes you think about it, doesn't it? Because but you mean you quickly realise like at one point that the girl he's got an infatuation with that the film almost implies he's in a relationship with, he yeah, actually yeah. isn't. He's imagining it. It's not actually happening. Well obviously so, the whole thing is like the whole T V show at the end is going to be in his head isn't it because yeah. how can it be a sequel <laughs> yeah but it's, have you ever seen the king of comedy with robert de niro no once no it's a master it is when i say masterpiece i genuinely mean it I, we watched it the other night again for the first time in years and it's based a lot of i mean even the robert de niro robert de niro's in um the joker uh movie but it's a lot of similarities between the two films so if you watch the king of comedy you'll go god they he really took a lot of inspiration from that film and applied it to the joker with his the, the way the joker is effectively you know kind of yeah. wanting some success and fame and to be recognized and to be sort of loved and adored and all, and all these things but i've also heard people say that the joke is just an incel yeah you know? i've heard that yeah it, and i i can see their point yeah, but I, I can't help but think a lot of the time when you hear people say the joke was an incel, that was one of the idiots that tried to cause trouble when the film came out because they tried to say that the film was inciting violence in America. They actually set up metal detectors in the cinemas oh. out in the States, yeah, because they were they were saying they were worried it might cause violence. You so said mm. they were walking people through metal detectors out in the States. Which is funny because, like, you know, when you look at it, most of them were the ones that were saying that the Joker's an incel. You know, so it's like, right, okay, so is that what's really going on here then, is it, <laughs> you know? I wonder if that was a bit of uh, clever marketing, you know? Yeah, could probably. be. Could be. It, you know, it works. I mean, when you look at a lot of these things, um, you kind of... <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is go and look at Bit Shooter Odyssey. <laughs> There's a lot of interesting shit on there yeah. that might sway your opinion one way or another about these events. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like I say, the the, the new one, they're saying it's going to be a musical. It's got Lady Gaga playing Harley Quinn, isn't it? Is she any good in Uh She has been in something. I haven't seen it, but I have. I watched was her in as in far as Born. She was good in that. That was it. Yeah, Star is Born. I she was quite good in that. Yeah. Is that right, is it? Mm. No, it's all right. Yeah. I haven't Star seen it, so I can't say. But... That's a remake, isn't it? Right. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So we're saying you, you're not sure. I must admit, we probably will go and watch the, the Joker Part 2, whatever it's called. It's got some of the wanky bloody French name to it, hasn't it? Like a sub... What's it, what's it called? Yes, that's right. Yeah, it's... it's... 
It's like they've tried to do part right part two, but it's in French or whatever, isn't it? Yeah. Part two. <laughs> part two. <laughs> Wait, it's, not, it's not part, but it's something do. Yeah. Was that hot yeah. shots this week? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, hot shots part do. Part do. That's what everyone needs to go back to is taking yeah. the out itself. You remember the first and hot shots? <laughs> The first yeah. hot shots, you had the guy with the handkerchief through his ears. Yeah. <laughs> he was in Battlestar, wasn't he? Battlestar Galactic. He was in the I want to see, yeah, I want to see more it, like that in cinema. More hot shots, part two, and scary movie, and all this stuff that's just taking oh, the absolute. They're redoing really scary out. movie. Did you know that? Oh, they're going to fuck it up, man. Yeah, I so. imagine Doofy wouldn't be allowed now because it would like upset all the people with low IQ or whatever. Yeah, wouldn't it? That's the yeah. thing that's taking the piss out of like, the handicapped. Yeah. I mean, it's fucking... But isn't Scary Movie so funny? That's fucking uh, hilarious. That, when that you go when back watch, watch them films now, they're fucking hilarious. Yeah, like, hilarious. He sticks her to the ceiling. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's funny. And he's cutting still... down a bush, isn't he, with a hedge trimmer. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <I swear. laughs> uh, we were saying on a stream not so long back, it might have even been the last one, Scott, we was talking about repossessed, remember, with James Woods. Yeah, when, yeah. When she's like, she says to the vicar, fuck me or whatever, and he goes, fuck that. Like, <laughs> <that's Yeah>. <laughs> There's Stop someone you don't see in films very often now, James Woods. Well, yeah. the reason is because he's outspoken and he doesn't care what he says. Oh, he's, always in, he's always in Family Guy. <laughs> he's, he's so good in these films. Is he a like, Family Guy? I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's who... Is that who the school's named after? In my sure, opinion, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he is. I'm sure he, he's definitely in it. Like, he's in, in some in, fucking great... I mean, yeah. He's in some great movies, though, isn't he? Good actor. The Specialist. And in Casino. The Hard Way. The Hard Way, yeah. Yeah. Video yeah. um, Drone. Yeah, Video Drone. Cronenberg at his best. Dirty pictures so well. about yeah. the the um the photographer Robert Maplethorpe. Um, have a look at him. He was homosexual as well, and yeah. had a lot of phallic sim symbology in his photographs. Started a good movie. Sunday. He's in there. Any given Sunday, he plays the doctor. That's right. Yeah, he plays a pro like he plays a prick like no one else. He's great at it. Vampire. 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 Yeah, Vampire. That's what I saw him in recently, Scott, because we bought him at Christmas. Yeah, I have. Yeah. I've just bought that as well. That was one of the it's really good. You know, I watched that, I watched I that, that Pedro, when we got them off that indicator. Oh, I watched that um, Vampires, and I remember back in the day when that came out, I went to the cinema, and I was a bit disappointed. I thought, oh, this isn't that good. But I watched it again when we got it on Blu-ray, and fucking yeah. hell, I really enjoyed that yeah. film. So did I. It's really good fun, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was, it's, really it's, good another, fun. it's another one of the films where you just switch your brain off and just watch. And, and he just like, plays an arrogant prick, and I just think the time. <laughs> he's an old soul in it. Yeah, he really is. I mean, the thing is, you know, he's got like one of the highest IQs, he's like 150 or something. You know, <laughs> he's not a stupid man. And you think to yourself, here's a guy that really don't give a fuck, does he? Yeah, what he, he says, he's, he's funny as well, though. His comedic timing's perfect, right? Yeah. I mean, Dry. Well, I watched um, Any Given Sunday the other day, right? And it's the bit... Do you remember the bit where they fire him? And as he's walking away, he starts calling his young girlfriend. And she goes, oh, I think I'm going to stay here. And he goes, okay, stay here. Get butt-fucked by 12 Neanderthals. Fuck you, mate. <laughs> <That's on. laughs> the timing's just spot on. And it's like, love it. <laughs> That's a great line. <laughs> Fine, stay here and get butt-fucked by 12 Neanderthals, he goes. <laughs> <laughs> what a line. <laughs> and it's the same in the specialist as well. Do you remember the bit where he's he's winding him up and he's keeping quiet and then all of a sudden he kicks off, doesn't he? He starts swearing and fuck you, Ray, fuck you. I haven't <laughs> seen that in years. Is that the one with Sharon Stone? Yes. Yes. Yeah. God, that's a mere movie I've not given any thought to in fucking 25 oh, you years. Watch it. I, I You're gonna watch that now, Pedro. Yeah, yeah, I thought that's the watching that. I picked up the Stallone box set recently yeah. and it's got that in it. And I watched yeah. it long back. It's still a good film. It's a great film. What's, what's in the Stallone box set, Lee? Uh, hang on, let me grab it. I'll let you know. Hang Lee, um, I'm, I'm going to have to shoot, lads. Um, all right, mate. Cool. But um, nice yeah, to it's see been you, good having a chat and it's been good catching up with you all. Um, yeah, Pedro, good to see you. We've still got to do that um, stream. 
<laughs> one day, <laughs> one day, one day <laughs> Until then, <laughs> but no, see it's um, it's been really good fun, lads. And um, see, yeah. you later, see you soon. See, see you later. Later. Cheers for coming on. Right, let's get this box out. I'll let you know. Yeah, so I just I got a bit excited tonight. I feel like I'm just talking over everyone, so I apologise. Also, I can't really hear anything. You know, I can't he see what people are doing. So if you've noticed, who's that fat twat at the uh, the bottom left? Uh, he's talking over everyone and dominating the conversation. It's purely because I haven't got my headphones in. I can't read when people are trying to talk. So is this set here you want? And it's got oh, Cobra, Assassins, right, Tango and Cash, The Specialist, and Demolition Man. And that's the Blu-ray box set. This was going that's cheap right. on Amazon at one point. Um, I, I, I can't remember how much I paid, but it was ridiculously cheap at one point. I've yeah. got a similar one myself, actually, in the garage I need to pull out. And I, I had I just got Demolition Man for a quid, actually. I got, and I, we started watching it the other night in Wayne. Oh, mate, it's such a good film. <laughs> it really, Wesley Snipes is the bomb, right? Oh, Isn't yeah. He's fucking cool as shit. Like, he's taekwondo and whatever. He's high kicks. Yeah. He's like, good what? That. I mean, he's, he's... Have you ever seen Jung... I'll tell you what's a movie you need to see with him. It's a really... It's a Spike Lee joint. So you can imagine it's got a certain uh, narrative. But it's a great movie. It's called Jungle Fever. I've not and seen it's that. got Samuel L. Jackson in as a crackhead. Oh, I don't really? think I've seen that. Oh man, Jungle Fever! You, it's about a black guy and a, a white woman, uh, Italian, who who get into this relationship. But it's handled in a really interesting way, um, and uh, you know how their but their communities don't get on, sort of thing, and they, yeah. they, they don't approve of the relationship. And it's in the late eighties, but it's just a cool ass film. And it's Spike Lee, but before Spike Lee was just insufferable. Yeah, you know when he yeah, had a yeah. method that was kind of interesting. Yeah, good movie. I'll have to keep an eye out for that. I've not seen that. I liked him in uh, Passenger 57. That, yeah, that, was, film. that was the first film I went to watch. Um, just before I turned 15, we lied to get me in. It was like two weeks before my 15th birthday, and so I lied and got in. So, yeah, I, I remember that film like it was yesterday. Good film, Passenger uh, 57. Yeah, that's going back a few, what's it like, 92 or something. Um, I'm trying to think the first 15 film I went. Yeah, it would have been 92. Yeah, I think the first 15 film I went and see at the cinema was um, Terminator 2. Yeah, was I, wasn't, I wasn't old enough to see that. I saw that on a dodgy pirate that we bought in the market. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, fucking so when that came out, it was like shit. But I do yeah. remember like watching Terminator 2 and then watching Terminator 1 afterwards. Because, you know, when Terminator 2 came out, it was 91, I would have been, what, 11, 10, yeah. 11. So the ideal age for it, really, is like, oh, my, you two would be introduced to it. And, uh, and then I watched Terminator 1 afterwards, and as much as I like Terminator 2, and I've, I've got a real appreciation for it now, you, the first one's the one, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. I agree. There's something about the first one, isn't there? Well, I mean, the, the first one's got a charm because, and, and I mean, you know, I'm going to go back to explaining how stories work, you know, because Hollywood, in some chance, they might listen to this and actually learn saying, you know, what you need is a couple of characters to start in one position and progress throughout a film and become something else by the end of it and actually be redeemable in some sort of way, you know. You yeah. have a, a, a woman who's a... a, a, a works in a, a restaurant and she... Goes around getting people their meals and all that. Not a fighter in a million years. Scared of everything. And then by the end of the film, she's crushing a Terminator in a machine. And she's been now yeah. become someone who's now got to train her son to be a leader. Yeah. You know, this is a good film. Like, I feel how they handled Terminator 2 so well in it. Because I can remember watching the original Terminator at the end of that. And then when I heard there was a sequel coming, I was like blown away. How are they going to do this? And but it was again, just done so tremendously well yeah, and how cool. they impressed her character. You believe yeah. it? Because of what she'd been through, she had turned into this right hard nut. Yeah. You know, you just never consider Sarah... I mean, it's weird, isn't it? Like, you know, we talk about, like, the female empowerment and all this kind of stuff. The direct, 
And, I, and you know that trope about people saying, actually, there are strong female characters that aren't annoying in Mary Sue's. But there is a truth in that because yeah. she's still a woman. And especially in the film, you see her progress, she has to become like this. Yes. Be but yeah. she's still, you know, she's still only a woman and only has, can only perform to a certain standard, if you like. She's not trying to be harder than a man. What makes um, the Sarah Connor character so strong is being a mother. Yeah. And it's the same the as Ripley, isn't it? Thing. Yeah. That's yeah. the one strong characteristic of a woman, isn't it? It's being a strong mother and what she'll go through to protect her son. And the same what you just said there, Lee, about, um, about Ripley. She became an even stronger character in protecting Newt and Aliens. Yeah, but see, now this is the thing, right? Now, some people miss this, but when you watch the first Alien, first of all, right, one of the things that makes her character so powerful in that film, have you noticed how the face hugger looks like, you know how it looks like hands, right? Yeah. And if you look at what actually goes down the throat and you actually see it when it bursts out into Kane's face in the first one, what goes down his throat almost looks like a, a penis, if you like, right? Yes. <laughs> so, right. So if you actually if you actually look at it like from this point of view, you could say that Kane has technically been sexually assaulted. He's been raped by this thing. Yeah. And it's now impregnated in him, right? So this is what makes that film turn out the way it does with regards to Ripley, right? Because yeah. here is a man who's basically been abused by a an alien, whatever, and it's impregnated him, right? And she goes from a character from the point of she's second in command and no one listens to her. The blokes don't take her seriously. And she even at one point, because she won't open the door and uh, what's his face? Ash overrides her and opens it. Only we know why, but at that point we don't. Um, she actually gets slapped by, um, oh Christ, what's her name now? The female slaps her, don't she? I can't yeah. think of her name. Anyway, she hits her. Like, hits her second in command, someone who's above her, back ends her. And again, doesn't take her seriously. But then as the film goes on, all of a sudden we're seeing these people start to buckle. But Ripley doesn't. She gets stronger as it goes on. Yeah. She goes from someone who can't cope when Dallas goes, when he gets grabbed, to someone who's now leading them and telling them what they need to do. Yeah. So effectively, what's happened in that film is you've seen one male character get technically sexually abused if you like many other male characters get killed by the alien and also one female and at the end you're left with one strong female that actually manages to beat it yeah again storytelling progression you know we are actually seeing someone who's not respected at the beginning of the film getting to the point at the end where she's the only survivor that's great storytelling this is why yeah. people like ripley same reason they like sarah connor redeemable characters that went on a journey that started off as one thing and ended as another. Why is it Hollywood can't get this? Why can't they do this in their film? You know, it's not us. It's not difficult and you're right. And it's, um, they're not playing some with women's strengths. They never have this issue in Asia. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like going back to the seventies, early seventies, you've got, female kick-ass kung fu stars and i keep mentioning angela may is one of my favorites i have all her films that, that have come out now um but there's, there's a few of them you know and in the west i guess since since cynthia rough rock and whatever but they're, they're, they're because they're doing kung fu this is another thing there's even though they're, they're not nowhere near as strong as the men per se they've got because of their sort of athleticism they're able to like, like, you know, if you, you're really good at certain martial arts, you're able to out sort of smart and out skill an opponent. Yeah. 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 But it's yeah. not necessarily out of brute. It's definitely never a brute strength thing, you know? Mm. Yeah. So it's all about technique. Yeah. So you can, that, that will work. All right. That's fair enough. Um, so it's never unbelievable. But what they have here now is in, 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 for a long time is the women. Who were able to just beat the shit out of blokes? Yeah, God, have you seen it's that rebel moon? 
Have you seen that Red Bull Moon? No, I haven't. <laughs> oh God, like that's all she does. Like they they should have explained in that that she's got some sort of genetics or she's half machine or say because she does literally just club them in. And he, and you you can even see men are waiting and standing in place for her to get to him, you know, because she's really not that quick and they're trying to make it look like she is, you know, like yeah, he's terrible. And unfortunately, we're seeing this in everything, aren't we? This is the thing. I wonder what the sequel to that will be like because that starts soon, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> you see, the, the thing is, I just uh, I, I refuse to put myself through it. You know, I think to myself, um, yeah, I've missed tried many, many times for a long time now. You know, I've never watched, started to watch so many movies in the past ten years uh, as I have in you know since the past decade and, and stopped watching after ten minutes. Yeah. That's a regular yeah. thing. Or, well, it became a regular thing for a long time. I'll tell you exactly when it started. It started when Scott Pilgrim versus the World came out. Yeah. Because everyone was raving about it, and I put it on. I thought, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't. I just couldn't. What? No. And then, and then I went to see. We went to the pictures. My mate knitting come and picked me up, and we went to the pictures when I moved here, so a decade ago. He said, "Do you want to go and watch the new Independent Day?" And yeah, right. Fuck oh me. God, that was terrible, Holy wasn't it? Shit. Yeah. Was like, it was just fucking appalling. It was just a so, redo, but a really bad one. Yeah. yeah. It's just awful in every way. And then I went to watch the Terminator one, Genesis. Oh. And I thought these cunts can't act. Dark Fate was worse. Have you seen that one? No, I refuse. Oh. I don't managed to get through the whole of that film. I've oh, tried. It's it's ah, oh, it's awful. It's fucking awful. Like it's the horrible. only reason that I finish these films is because I like to take the piss out of them afterwards. Yeah, it's the only reason I finish them. Because then, like, I, I mean, I, I have it where I talk to a few people at work and there's some people that come out with outlandish things. And I like to sit there sometimes and just take them apart. Like, you know, because anybody who thinks Dark Fate's a good film is absolutely mad. There's nothing good about that film at all. You know, they killed John Connor for fuck's sake. How can it be a good film? Like, It's just demoralising men again, isn't it? It's like, yeah. here's John Connor. You could have yeah. brought old Edward Furlong back, right? He was a good, good actor. Gone through some tough times, right? But you could have brought him back as an older guy, right? Why didn't you do that? Yeah. You could have put some fucking fan service there. I'd have gone and watched it. Even the Schwarzenegger as an old Terminator, I could buy that. All right, cool. Yeah, he but chopped it's like, his balls off in that, though, didn't they? Oh my god! Like they literally chopped his balls off in that film. He's not allowed to do anything without another character criticizing him for it. You see, the, <laughs> and it, like Scott says, it's just demoralizing. It's making women out to be arseholes, isn't it? You yeah, know, it's it like do them any favours at all. Any favours. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, as I say, with, with like the ethnic minorities, it's not fair on them. No. If, if they're only ever seen as being sort of moaning and complaining and sort of making problems all the time, that's not a fair reflection in real life, is it? No. So I just, it... the more I think about this stuff, the more I think there has to be some sort of hidden reason for all this. I forget who it was, but there was a female actor recently. I forget who it was. But she turned around and said, I'm fed up with the strong female character role. How am I supposed to play this? This is what a woman said recently. I forget who it was. But she was basically pointing out they're boring characters to play because what are you supposed to do with that? And she's right. She's not wrong. <laughs> when I heard that, I thought, how refreshing that a female actor has actually come out and said, what am I supposed to do with that then? You know, <laughs> there actually there are some out there that don't want to play these strong female characters because they're two dimensional and boring. It, yeah, uh, very much so. And it's like you yeah. it, you can't just keep doing the same old thing. And I, I, I do wonder if this. I mean, it's been going on for a long time now, hasn't it? Lonely, you know, this mm. intersectional business. It's just it's just dragged on and on and on oh, and yeah. on. Well, it's coming up nearly ten years, I'd say, at this point. Yeah, it? I would, and, it, and it, yeah, this is why. I do, but most of most of these films, I just don't watch because I just can't. Yeah. Because I just know it's gonna, and it used to wind me up. And you go back to the boot. Um, today's a good example of where I've discussed it again. I tried to give it a slight different angle today, but um, yeah, it, it's very. I mean, I get it. If you're a glutton for, for, for punishment like you, 
you know, you, you don't mind. I get it. Some people want to watch it just to, to get. I don't know, just to re to react like you say. I get that, yeah. but I got to the point where I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, because it just because I actually started fucking and it started frustrating me in the, in the real world. And it, you, you know, like you start thinking, oh, everything's shit. I, now, I'm like it. I mean? I'm like it with certain things. Like for example, I will swerve TV series because. Like I was saying to Scott the other day when he was saying about Fallout, and I said, is it any good, though? Because I don't want to dedicate time to it and then find yeah. out it's shit. Because the problem is you're not just wasting two hours on a shit movie. You're wasting eight hours on eight episodes, though, right? So with yeah. TV, I'm less inclined to just watch and get along with it. No. Films, okay, a couple of hours, that's not too bad. But I've been burned on a lot of TV programs. That's why I like with a free body problem. I, I knew someone who'd watched it and they said to me, they, they were quite a way into it and they were saying, it's boring, it's slow, it's going nowhere and it doesn't make sense. Don't bother watching it. And I knew then not to watch it because if he's saying that, it, I knew it was going to be bad. And it sounds like I was right because everyone's complaining about the same thing. So, yeah. So it depends what it is. It's a TV show, Lee. Watch Mr. In Between. Yeah, that's you know, great. You have to give that's that a look. Great. Then give that... Give that your time. So for that's one, yeah. So for once, chef's recommended saying it's actually good, then, right? Well, this is it. This I, I thought so. Yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> chef's a bit like Mike Houlihan in a way. Yeah, he's well, an, he's an but, suggest some shit films. He really they does. accept they accept certain things. I'm so far the other way. Yeah, you know, unaccepting of everything, like a terrible, terrible snob. But also, I like weird exploitation and whatever. So it's like a, it sounds like I'm it's hypocrisy, really, because I like I do love a trash film as long as it's fun and entertaining, you know. Um, but again, I, I, well, I refuse to waste my, my time because I've done it before, and I just think if there's going to be something in here that I, I can't look overlook something, if yeah. one little thing pisses me off, yeah, I'm done. It could be minute, minuscule. It's just going to fuck me off to the point where uh, I, I cannot then continue with the movie. Yeah. I mean, one of the things on these streams, I, I feel that we do talk about the agenda quite a lot, but the problem is you can't talk about modern films or anything in the last 10 years without mentioning that because it's in everything, isn't it? That's the problem. You could if we didn't talk about Hollywood films. Yeah. that Well, yeah, that's true. That's true. And, and that's why when we do these streams, I always prefer the specials <laughs> over anything else because at least then we're looking at older films without all that crap in it. <laughs> you know, so, like, well, I say that. I mean, we did a Star Wars special. Unfortunately, we had to talk about the sequel trilogy, and that's got loads of it in, but that's another Did everybody, story. um, did everybody, did, what's the, you know, the general consensus about Star Wars? Because I didn't watch all of it. I, I watched some of that, Lee. I got, I came in really late. Yeah. Um, and, and I started watching it. It was a good stream. But you'd got to, you'd sort of done a lot of it. And then some people left. Did it, was the general consensus that everybody thought the sequels, not the original sequels, but, you know, the new ones, fucking with Ray and all that in, were they were the shit? Yeah, um, I think there might have been one person that liked one of the films out of the three. I, I like The Force Awakens. Yeah, but as a rule, overall, I think we all disliked them. I mean, I, right. I know that um, Pete from Pedro's Movie Cavern, he, I know that he defended, because I, I had quite a bit to say about J.J. Abrams, right? And I know he defended him and said, oh, it's not as bad, you know, it was Lawrence Kasdan as well. But then when mm. we got to the Rise of Skywalker, I went, well, hang on a minute. Like, who did Rise of Skywalker then? And he went, okay, I'll take that on the chin. You're right. It, it's a terrible film. So so he did defend one of the films, which was The Force Awakens, but he couldn't defend the next two because they're terrible. So, yeah, I think as a whole, overall, everyone I think was pretty much there with the sequel trilogy being shit, really. That's interesting because it's like, um, I do wonder, you could someone because from what I can tell, you know, looking at Instagram or whatever, I can see there's a lot of people that like still are really quite into sort of NPC like movies, you know, like yeah. uh, the the Hollywood stuff, and they're they're bang into it, all, all this shit, and um, but then if they're criticising it, maybe they're not. 
but then they still buy it. I don't get it. I'm confused by that. Yeah. Yeah, it is a weird one. I just don't understand why. You know, I, I watched The Force Awakens at the cinema, right? And I, I didn't like the Ray character at all, but I, I quite enjoy it. It's nice to see Chewie back, Harrison Ford, do you know what I mean? There was enough in there to kind of get, to sort of say, yeah, it's sort of all right. B8 was cool, wasn't he? You know, the, the robot fucking, was he called B8? BB8. Yeah, he, you know, like he was, he was sort of, he was sort of all right, but um, yeah, and maybe I wasn't quite as cynical then, or I'd become like, you know, like a, you know, when you adapt to things and go, I'm just gonna fucking enjoy this because I'm going to the pictures. There hasn't been a Star Wars film. Just gonna sort of fucking accept it. Well, the, the thing is, when we walked out of it, I mean, of course, at this point, Disney hadn't made their approach clear, you know, on the agenda. They hadn't. That's and, true. And I remember when we walked out, I remember saying to both of my boys, because I took them to watch it, and I said, I don't know what it is, but saying about that film don't sit right with me, you know, and I kept I couldn't put my finger on it. And then we went back and we watched it a few days later, like three days later. I think it was just before Christmas. We went back and watched it again. And uh I I remember coming out and I'm like, Yeah, it's not me, it's the film. There's same wrong with that film. And then it dawned on me what they'd done. They'd rehashed A New Hope, and that's why I didn't like it. Ah, uh, interesting. You know, it was basically like, it, you know, I didn't realise, hang on a minute, Hans Obi-Wan, and this is this, mm -hmm. and that is that. And, you know, and it was beat for beat. And then it's like, oh, bb is the new R2-D2. Oh, and yeah, Ray's yeah. the new Luke Skywalker, you know. And and, and then it's like, uh, Starkiller Base is the Death Star. And as you went on and on and on, it's like, I'm seeing all these similarities, and it's like, yeah, now I know why I don't like this film, because this is a worse version of the original. Yeah. So, and then of course, you know, but you was I was still willing to give it a shot at that point. Yeah. Until, until the last Jedi come out, and then I was like, fuck this. Like, you know, that when that came out, they spat in the face of every OG Star Wars fan. I right. really go to the cinema and come out so angry over watching a film. Yeah, yeah. The Last Jedi. I, I remember loudly saying when the film finished, "What the fuck did I just watch?" Yeah, and I remember people looking around, you know, and they—you could tell they agreed. They just didn't say anything like I did, you know. Like, I was fuming when that film finished. Especially the mama joke at the beginning. Like, if whatever the fact I would have got chucked out, I would have thrown my can of monster at the screen. That really fucked me off, that line. It really did. What was the line, Lee? Because I've never seen it. So it's the bit where he's calling and Hux answers him and he's like, call for Hux. Um, you know, and he's like, I've got a message for your mum or something like that, he says. Saying along them lines. I can't remember exactly because I've only watched it twice because it's an horrendous film and I refuse to watch it again. But yeah, he, he's basically <laughs> pretending he can't hear him, and he's saying, "I got a call for your mum." Like he, honestly, and then seconds after that, Luke throws a lightsaber over his shoulder as well. That's when you knew you're Disney like, oh. had a trick of it because they were using Marvel jokes in a Star Wars film, mm -hmm. and that's what—that's when it hit me, and I was just like, I was oh. gobsmacked because it was right at the beginning of the film, when, and I, and when they done that, I thought, "What the fuck." I'll never forgive them for what they did to Luke. No way. Yeah. This, they... is the issue. this is why I didn't go, uh, you know, to, because I'd, I'd heard that Luke, you know, if you're into the samurai films and Kung Fu and whatever, you know, the, the, the student eventually overcomes the teacher. However, yeah. it's a long, arduous process, yeah? Yeah. yeah. You know, it has to be... They could have made that so fucking cool, couldn't they? It's got to be earned. It's got to be earned, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, they could have made it like a training montage and all that shit. But I heard that she just battered him. And I was like, I'm yeah. having that. And, and the other reason I'm why I don't that. like it, they, they make him out to be a coward. They they make out in the film that he was going to kill his nephew, even though he gave his dad a chance. You know, he refused to kill his dad because he thought he was redeemable. Why would that now change with his nephew? It just wasn't Luke at all. And then what yeah. makes it worse, by the time you get to the ninth film, well... Anakin's now not the chosen one. Ray is because Palpatine didn't die. The Sith didn't die. So they rewrote it all, weren't they? Like, and, and that's so it's why just I... man. You can see they're in a board meeting and, and, you know, they've got all these sort of blue-haired feminist types. And, and they're just going to go, let's just piss off 
everywhere. Every Star Wars fan. But, but here's a question for you guys. I don't know if you if you know this, uh, or, or or if anyone. You know, we're all talking about this and have got a certain view and whatever. Have you ever come across anybody who has the opposing view? Actually, you're wrong. It's fucking great. Can't you yeah, see? I have. Yeah, I have. Have you? Yeah. Yeah, and I and I always shut them down because the ones that have the opposing view are always younger people that have just come into it. And I always say to them, like, listen, mate, don't tell me how I should feel about Star Wars. I watched this when I was a kid, when it came out. You know, you don't tell me how Star Wars works. I tell you. Is this you know? is this in real life or just on comments? Like, No, no, no. This is real life. This is at work. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you yeah. what. In real life, I had a debate in... Um in in a shop next door to mine it's called the nerd hut and they're all talking star wars in there and they're all saying how they hated the original trilogy because it was just so poorly acted oh my and God, just really, really? Poor films but they really liked the prequels and they loved the disney ones one thing i can say is the sequel trilogy and they were made... all free they were all sort of like they and i said to them look you never grew up with star wars star wars was Yes, I see what you mean. You know, to a 20 something's eyes, they are not going to look at Star Wars, the original trilogy, like we did growing up with it. No, fair, yeah. fair they, enough, back yeah. it, they see it as cammy and and just poorly acted and poorly put together. But that was cinema back then that they see cinema very different to what we've grown up with. Yeah, so yeah. I understood what they were saying, but I said, No yeah, way would I yeah. accept that the Disney films are any fucking good. <laughs> Um, I'm going to have to yeah. wrap it up here, guys, because I'm yeah. going to have to go. But one last thing I yeah. just wanted to add on this discussion was I actually think, and I've heard this from people as well, that the sequel trilogy only makes the prequels look better, I think. Agreed. The prequels, I enjoyed them. I, I, I enjoyed them because I could see what George was trying to do. It made yeah. perfect sense to me. And one quick thing before we go, Dominic Diamond, you know, in that interview you did with him, and he said, this really fucking wound me up. I know oh, you yeah. Funny. When he went, well, actually, I think the uh, prequels were shaped, but the sequels were great. Fuck off, Dominic Diamond. Yeah, yeah. You remember what you're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I disagreed with him as well, if I remember You did. Right. You did. Yeah. You were the only one that did, Lee. Fair oh, play. They're, they're garbage. I can't stand them. But Rogue One's good. I like Rogue One. In yeah. It's not too yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah. It, it works. Right, let's call it a day here, guys. Yeah. Uh, Thanks for coming on, Pedro. I really appreciate it. It's been a great stream. I've really enjoyed this, and the time's flown by. It has flown. Yeah. I can't believe I've it's talked for hours. Yeah. Shit. We're, we're definitely going to have to do this again, for sure. Thanks for inviting me, Lynn. I'm sorry if I uh, next time I hopefully get the computer and I don't have to talk over everyone. I That's feel like right. I'm going to mic cool hand tonight. No, you've done all right. <laughs> you've been fine, mate. You've been fine. Um, Scott, as always, thanks for coming on, mate. No worries, mate. You know, the other two hosts are bloody useless. Don't show up. So, you know, at least Scott did. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. One of them weren't even in the chat. Where was Chef? <laughs> well, if anyone wants to fucking pop in every now and again, I'm I'm happy to chat shit. Oh mate, I'll, I'll definitely have you back on at some point, mate. Without a doubt, I've been really enjoyed tonight. Right, let's find the outro. Oh, and I should add that everybody who's been on here is linked in the description down below. Oh, great! So if you're not checked out VHS bootleggers, you should do. And you'll probably already know Sega Zombie, but he's linked below as well. And with that, I'm going to hit the outro. See you later, guys. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you on the next one. Laters. See ya.